Hello, welcome to Dungeons and a Dime. Also, so Fraser can't see me because my camera is feeding into OBS, but it is on yeah. so that the audience at home can see me. Welcome to uh, Dungeons and a Dime's uh, YouTube channel where we are streaming working on a dime. I need to get better at these intros. <laughs> uh, yeah. There we go. Oh, honey, I'm getting some feedback. Yeah, I just started playing the live stream there for like a second. I forgot I had muted it. <laughs> Mute that, honey. Yeah, so Working on a Dime is a really casual show where I, Brian Terrell extraordinaire, um, work with artists from the greater Dungeons on a Dime portfolio universe uh, on projects. And we just have fun, do shit, vibe, and also draw. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, if I didn't say before, I'm Brian. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I run all of Dungeons on a Dime, so I write, I design, I illustrate, all sorts of stuff. But occasionally, I also work with fantastic, fabulous, talented artists like Fraser, whose name is Ver and They Them from a previous stream, so I'm going to fix that. But Fraser, while I fix your name, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, no worries. Uh, I am Fraser, as uh, will be corrected in a moment. I also use he, him pronouns. Uh, and I have worked with Brian on Dungeons and a Time various issues for just over a year now. We figured this out last time. Uh, yeah. For about a year. Uh, I've done some instant illustrations, a couple of covers and things. Uh, I am a freelance illustrator for the most part. Um, yeah, I do kind of character designs and uh, comics and kind of narrative illustrations. Um, and yeah, that's kind of me. Yeah. Awesome. And what are you working on today, Fraser? Well, Brian, today I am working on uh, some of the minis we are producing together as a pack for, uh, like a resource pack for Roll20. So oh, you'll be doing fancy. for them, and I'm doing some characters. Yes. And I'm going to be honest, of all the characters, the one that has grown on me the most is the Bear-Barian. Oh, the Bear-Barian? Yes. Yeah. Um, She's a favorite. She's grown on me the most, but also, I would love it if she only had one arm. Because that's how it looks with the bear pelt, as if, like, it's just covering her body. Because her yeah, other arm is out holding the sword, but I would like it much more if she just had one arm. I think yeah, that would be really that. sick. Completely. Yes, I agree. Mm. And, like, no prosthetic, because there are tons of people who have, like, uh, missing limbs for various yeah. reasons that are fully functional and able to do whatever they want. Um, exactly. So I would love it just to have like some more disabled characters out there in the universe who are just kicking ass without any need to be normal or better. Absolutely. No, I really like that actually. I think that's that's kind of now. No arm. I'm gonna add a note. No, if I could spell, not no arm. Non arm. <laughs> it's actually a tail. <laughs> it's actually the bear's still alive. They are. <laughs> oh my god, they're merged. <laughs> Teleport they're spell gone wrong. Yeah. That's disgusting. Every so when like it becomes sentient at some point and just like oh my god if you get too close it has a bite attack. No, I mean you know it could be a magic item. Mm. Well, I, I swear more. there is in like Pathfinder a, a, a special magic item for bar bar barbarians that allows them to bite people with a bite attack. Oh. Like it's like a wolf cow and then it actively like chomps people as a bonus attack action or something. Oh, okay. But that's Pathfinder, which is all, it's a whole other universe yeah, of, that's of stuff. Fun. Of just entirely how they approach combat and, and stuff like that. Today, I'm yeah. working on an actual commission. This is, uh, oh, I got a notification. Oh no, you got a notification. Sorry. Ooh. We're both in Procreate, so I'm like, oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. Um, I am working on a commission uh, for a private client. Uh, but I'm doing, it's really cool. Uh, so I'm glad I can share it with you guys as I sort of work on it, but I'm on the wrong layer. Um, but it is a, basically, they've been playing for about maybe like a year, a year and a half, and this is their hut. It's a magic druid hut oh. that's semi-sentient, and every time a new person joins the family, it grows a new room for them. That's so nice. I know! It's so cute. And the best thing is, they've given me... Um, I don't know, I won't speak on the behalf of any other artist, but they've given me a 27-page document of, like, information and references for the house. 27 pages? Yeah. Um, and they were also like, this might be a bit long, so you can just, like, 
not a paid attention to it. But I'm like, oh, this is easy. They did all the work for me. That is actually, to be fair, I recently did some character commissions and like two people that commissioned me had these like documents just set out and ready to go. And it just had like everything. It had like exactly what boots they wear, exactly like what the like knives looked like. It was just, it was perfect. Mm. And I was like, this is great. I can just piece it together. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So also, I'm taking today's drugs because this is the first time I sat down at my desk. Everyone, take your medication. Drink some water. Stay hydrated. <laughs> oh, so I'm just sort of um, working on the floor plan. They gave me a floor plan. Yeah, working on the floor plan they gave me and figuring out how a, how the space works um, together. That's fun. Yeah, Idiot I feel like for, fun. yeah, for doing like a full house, that's quite. Yeah, just figuring out where things go, like what people mm. wear. I've had to make a couple changes. So, like, they have a, a, a basement with a coal storage oh. unit. Uh, let me go to the thing. So, it's on the stream now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mm. But, yeah, so uh, I've had to, like, shift where the stairs were originally, because originally they were meant to go here. Oh, God. The hidden layer feature of procreate back to get me again yeah so originally like the stairs were like where i'm making these red scratchy marks um but i've had to sort of shift it to kind of be more of a spiral staircase just because it doesn't work in that space uh yeah, that's to have fair. the stairs go straight down like you just go into a wall which would be awkward yeah. to lift things up so yeah interesting interesting but it's nice because they said oh well you know here's all this inspiration but you can change anything you want so i'm gonna stay mm -hmm. as close as i can to the uh the thing but it's nice to have that leeway so i can actually make changes that make this better and cooler and stuff like that that's more there interesting yeah mm. um, cool. also i am in love by the way with this rainbow palette that i found when i googled rainbow palette and it was the first palette to come up but it's like these sort of softer rainbow colors in the little swatch Aww. rainbow I'm going to name it now. It is named. Um, but yeah, I've just been using those colors every single time I sketch. I was using them last week as well when I was doing the location map for the Patreon, which is all up now. Um, oh, yeah. Nice. But uh, that's where I was getting those really bright kind of like greens and teals and yellows from. Um, I just I just love the rainbow. I love these lovely, soft, uh, not like neon, but like soft rainbow yeah, colors. Yeah, they're when they're slightly... So we kind of they're put together more of a palette, more than mm. just like here's all the colors. Like um, a touch more muted. A touch more muted, yeah, and a little bit like some of the in between colors are kind of pushed to either end of the mm. kind of color spectrum. Interesting. Mm. I just really curiosity, Brian. Is there a way that I, that you I don't know how you had it set up last week, but I could see your screen and everything. Okay, so I think this is gonna oh, wow. mess things up for a second. Okay, but just because I didn't, like look at the stream to see what's happening, what is what you're Shabam. referring to? Oh, oh, oh! Because I'm not. Oh, I can see your screen at the same time. Okay, your face and yeah. your thing have swapped. So I'm gonna move this in the the thing. If I do, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Hold on, everybody. Step. We're professionals. We know exactly <laughs> not what we're doing. Because I remember last week as well. You had the. I could see the screen recording uh, screens. I could see like the live stream input as well. Oh, so I've I've just sent you my iPad. Um, yeah. Would you like to see the whole screen screen recording? I can Possibly, also because I can see like your iPad and your face all at the same time. Okay, that's me making noises of adjusting things on screen. <laughs> if I change what I'm sharing, it'll still be fine. Stop presenting, <laughs> and then start presenting. Your screen, a window, a window, and then oh, OBS. Bam, it's me. Perfect, there we go. It's Britney, bitch. Britney, bitch. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, because that just means that I can just like see what's going on like in slightly more real time. Yeah, um, just be aware your face will be massive for a little bit. <laughs> that's fine. Doop. Oh. Welcome to okay. Brian makes weird noises. <laughs> so this is where like your face is at. So I'm sorry that it's a bit zoomed in on your forehead, but uh, unfortunately, 
just the way it is, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just how it is. Definitely. Right. The date. Right. Uh, well, um, getting back to the introduction, uh, if any of y'all want to hit us up in the in the live chat, in the comments, say hello. Type some words. We'll respond. Yeah, let me remember to look at it. Well, this is the thing is that I've got, I've got my Wacom tablet, which is like seven years old and has died. So every time I touch it, the screen turns off. So I'm now just using okay. it as a second monitor. And I've got that. Um, and on two sides of it, I've got like OBS on one side. And then I've got YouTube live streaming with the comment thing on the other side. And then mm-hmm. I've got the main screen where I have got you drawing and your face. And then the whole Google thing. Goodness me. I just have an iPad and a laptop. So I'm like, like what between all the all it, the screens. Yeah, all it is thing. a lot. And then I have my iPad. Ugh. Oh, I uh, I went for Beast Fables and it was really fun to watch. It was nice to chill. I just had background while I was working on things. It that was is so nice. exactly what I wanted it to be. I'm so happy you've said that. Cool. It was very very chill. It was a very funny like I don't know the bit that got me most was like the. Uh, you're trying to find like a measurement of time and distance. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, like what was it? So you wrote you wrote something at the very end, which was like crows per minute, or like so good. I think I threw you off at one point with a comment of like the whatever toads like make noise from being like the voice. So you memed. I say you, you memed as if I'm like some twenty year old, not twenty, two hundred year old lady. Um, you did one meme. Uh, you were riffing, and you were like, "Oh, it's called the voice, the voice sack, the voice, voice bag. bag," but they're called yeah. vocal sacks. That's their actual yeah. name. Ugh. Yes, no. Beast really Fables fun. was incredibly fun. I'm so glad that everyone enjoyed it. Um, yeah, nice. I have not imported this very sweet as well. Like it was just very like very cute. Right. Oh, hello. Okay, everything is where it should be. We can all see what's oh. going on. This is this is good. Oh my god, I've scrolled down to the bottom and someone's got wooden legs. Sick. <laughs> of this. What? No, of, 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 the, of, the, of the reference document they've sent me. Oh, right. Um, and I was like, oh, oh I'm just going to have, I'm going to find a place to put those. I mean, saying that, maybe I will add someone with a wooden leg, because that's quite fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I thought it'd be quite fun to. I don't know if you saw this weird character when I sent it to you, like this weird little like just kind of old guy with like a healthy tattoo. No, I've I've so cropped cool. different parts of the sheet and then done them different mm-hmm. colors. So tomorrow an update will go out talking about the, these minis. So I've got all of the characters you had on that sheet there. Love that. Um, I was looking. I Probably should have eaten them up, but, you know. Sorry. Hindsight. Probably should have eaten them up, but you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Well, I liked that they were sketchy because it shows it like in progress. They are coming soon. It's not like they're here and we're just baiting you. This is very true. This is also very true. It's quite like the idea of him having like this little long turn on the end of his uh, or That was quite a nice little. Oh, a lantern. Mm. So I feel like, specifically just because I'm looking oh, at yeah. it, and I love a critical bitch, um, I think it will probably be on, a, on the boat itself because every time he does the oaring thing, mm-hmm. it'll like, whoosh, and it'll flick about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I have punted, because I used to live in Cambridge, uh, I have been on a punt a total of once. And uh, honey, it is A, a lot of work, and B, uh, the whole pole. That's the other thing is that when you're like, you're punting, um, pretty much the whole pole goes in the water. So it's really rapidly going up and down. So like, he'd have like the lantern one minute and then it would just be gone. <laughs> Oh god. Stolen by fairies. Stolen by Kelpies. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll just stick it on that end of the boat and just be fine. 
Thank God for a cut and paste. Do you ever, when you're drawing in a regular sketchbook, double tap like on the on the paper to undo? Oh my God. So I've stopped I've stopped drawing in, in physical sketchbooks because I have my iPad on me all the time. But there have been a couple of times when I've been making notes and I have unconsciously just gone to double tap. And or I've gone to scroll to zoom out and I've just scrunched the paper and I've gone, Oh Brian, yeah. you idiot. No, you absolute fool. Far too much. Like I'm I would almost be ashamed to admit how much I think I do it. I don't draw on sketchbooks a lot, mm. but I think that's probably the problem. Because like when I do, then I'm like, oh, it's just on my iPad. And then I'm like, boop. And it's like, nope, that doesn't work. That's my this part. <laughs> and I oop. And I oop. I've done it so many times. Not Luckily, not ever in front of anyone. Mm. Because then I have to explain like what I just did if they noticed it. And I'd be like, well. <laughs> I could just die of embarrassment on the spot. Instant, just like spontaneously combust. Just, yeah, instant death. There's no balancing in this here game. Oh my god. Right, let me go on. Put glue on there. Mm -hmm. It's both kind of too small, but you know, it kind of fits. It's fine. Well, I feel like the other thing is that he could be not in a, a boat, but he could be in a conical instead. In a what, what, what? A conical? Okay, a conical? so conicals are uh, old style boats. Let me. Hang on. Let me just educate me, senpai. Scribbles. And then I'm gonna go white. Bloop. I have a scribbles layer now, because mm -hmm. treat me. Um yeah, so this is what a, it's a conical is circular. It's like a mm -hmm. rowboat, but it's circular. It's made out of like stretched branches with hide. And it was like one of the first original boats. So this is from the top. This is from the side, and it has oh, like these, oh, these struts. Okay. Oh, okay. That and then it sense. has a, a lowered seat, sort of like here-ish. So in theory, yeah. he could be like, leg down here, leg all bowed here, and yeah. paddling. Ah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. That's fun. It's like a little upside-down umbrella. <laughs> You've caught them better than I ever could. Honestly. I I can't draw people, so Sorry, I just I just mess around. I, I honestly, though, that's perfect. I actually want to have. If you were tuned into the Beast Fables game, which was so much fun, like unbelievably fun. I was so nervous at the beginning for some reason because, as opposed to just live streaming and shit posting like I normally do, it's an actual show. <laughs> um, mm. But so I got into it really quickly, and I really loved the concept of like a whole beast lineup of the different sizes of beasts in this world. Cause we yeah. did these bats that were just like, I can't remember Tiny. what the shape was. They were like this. Yeah. And they then there like... was like, oh, there was a beaver. So it was like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little frog. <laughs> That's or toad. Frog, not like way smaller than the bat. Oh, well, they were the same size because there was that was ungrown, and this is a fully grown toad. Because toads all just get bigger oh. their whole lives; they just get bigger. Really, they just keep growing. Mm -hmm. They're like teeth, or no? What is it? Yes. Uh. No, no teeth, teeth don't keep. Yeah, sharks' teeth. teeth do. Oh, I don't like that. I really yeah. don't like that. And then you could just have like a wolf who's like. <laughs> Hello. I love that. But actually, uh, just that angle of like drawing the wolf there reminds me so much of my friend Robbie. The way he draws all his dog men like that. It's uh, very good. I, um. Mr. RD Kieran, you should check him out. Shout that out one more time. Mr. RD Kieran. R D K R N. Is it Muk R R D K R N, or just? Nope, just that. Just that. Just R. Uh, it's just like at R D K R N, usually on uh, Twitter and Instagram, I believe. 
I can't spell. I was going to go Twitter, and then I did T, and I was like, I'll do Teeter, and then it put teeth in there, so... Teeter. No right. thanks. Not today, Satan. Oh, what was I doing? I was working on this boot yeah, room. Was I can have the, this like little merchant guy, but I'm not too doing him particularly. He's He's got really bad um, posture for carrying that oh. sack. Terrible posture. Like he's got to do his back in. Absolutely, he's got a he's got a time limit on this. Uh... I'd love it if he had a wheel. <gasps> what if he had a wheelbarrow? And then the wheelbarrow yeah. could be a separate mini. I think that's maybe it. I can, yeah, I feel like a little like shitty wheelbarrow <laughs> kind of trundling along, just about to explode. <gasps> You know how you know how basically designing is a fucking like cabbage seller from Avatar. Yeah, I, I was getting those vibes. Also, I love the okay. Shout out to the to the person who commissioned me. I will not say unless they want to say. But like this, I've got a, a Google document from this twenty-seven page document, and they have got all of their characters commissioned in the document, but as memes. <laughs> oh, so one true. of them, do you know, like the it's my dad, boogie woogie woogie. <laughs> Yeah. They've got like the boogie woogie woogie like picture of their dad, but it's like the character holding a glass like in the ocean. Oh my god. <laughs> That's really good. Oh, I just all of this. That's really, mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. I wanna play in this game. Yeah, it sounds like a very wholesome group, but it feels like they've been playing for a while. Mm -hmm. Well year and a half is a while. It is a whill. A whill. Especially with one character. To have lived that long. <laughs> oh my god. Don't give the DM ideas. I mean, I'm just saying. Murder everybody. Murder everyone. I I never, I've yet Father, I desire die. violence. No, Father, I crave violence. <laughs> yeah, I've yet to have a character die, but it's definitely not out of the question. I've never killed a character. Well, well I say they haven't died. Technically, they did die. Oh. But the DM allowed them to come back because they were just a level one. <clears throat> oh, so... like the the first first encounter of Mines of Fandelva. Oh, everyone died. No, you're fine. It's fine. Everyone's fine. No, no, okay. no. no. That third death save that doesn't count. You're fine. The goblins capture yep. you. Yep. Or oh, the goblins like fuck. No, we didn't mean to kill them. CPR, CPR. <laughs> yeah. Undo, undo, double tap. Oh my god, Control Z. Uh, I need to look up a reference for wheelbarrow because I'm just freeballing at the point. Mm -hmm. I love room. that their description of the boot room is just this room is full of boots. And so now I've just got to like <laughs> draw like 50 boots. I mean, you know, they've got the brand. Mm -hmm. If you've got the Instagram account, you've got to capitalize. This is true. The boot room. What is it? If the if the glove don't fit. You must draw a boot room. It's something like that, for sure. Mm. I need like an old rickety bin wheelbarrow. That's what I want. Old rickety crickety. Oh, perfect. That's it. That's what we need. That's what we need. <laughs> You're like you're you're just the right amount of fucked up. You're yeah, perfect. You're just, you're, you're, got, like, you're degraded out. enough <laughs> for me to there's use you. There's just it's a mess. Perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. That tells you. Perfect. Let me like actually draw. So I just realised today um, that my phone has a silent mode, as in like no vibrations. So okay. like a silent mode beyond silent that isn't do not disturb. Because do not disturb is no notifications, no vibrations, no ringing, no anything. Um, yeah. And to stay concentrated, I've been putting on like do not disturb, which then means that I miss a bunch of stuff. So I'll be like, turn off yeah. do not disturb and be like, you have missed 20 calls, 60 messages yeah. on Discord. And I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, but instead I just have no vibrations. So I get like a flash on my screen of like something has happened, but doesn't... Mm -mm. Oh, that's quite handy. Yeah, which is which is nice. That's really nice 
I know that yeah, I'm scribbling. Notification like beeper in the front of my phone. Mm. Oh, the LED light. I don't have yeah. one of those. That is the word I was looking for. I had one on my um my Samsung S6, mm -hmm. um like five years ago. Um, I've grown to like it. It's quite good. I can kind of customize the colors apparently to. Well, you can also customize. I think all phones do this, but you can customize vibration patterns as well. Yes, which I have done, um, and is really neat uh, because I have different. I always it's always, but it's like slightly different variations of like how long it is. I don't know. It's not pitch. It's always, it's always like, but like if it's a, that's a Telegram notification. If it's a, that's WhatsApp. If it's. That is a, an email. Yeah. If it's uh, uh, Facebook notification. The noise that you're making is very, is like far too close to real notification. I kind of like what <laughs> it's Pavlovian. Like you've really got it down. Maybe you should become a voice actor for, for vibration. Oh my god, could you imagine? Like, oh naughty dog ringing me up. We need a phone notification, like a whole ringtone set. <laughs> You're the only one who can do it. There's only one person that we need. It's you, Brian. My life is valid. Now, this is, and to be honest, I don't know why I do fantasy adventures. Or even, like, I'm just going to jump these fables forward 1,200 years so that we can, everyone has phones and I can do phone notification noises. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Find your niche and love it. Wait, is there a kitchen? Oh, the pantry kitchen. Like wholesome family meals. Oh, I think they've called the kitchen the pantry. Which is like, I mean, interchangeable. Pantry is basically just the rich person's extra kitchen. Extra, yeah, the second kitchen. Yeah. It's like it's like a walk-in wardrobe, but for food. <laughs> um, walk-in cold fridge. Oh my god. Am I wrong? Get in there, Bon Appetit. Oh god, I wish I had a walk-in fridge. I've just I've just started like the last couple of months getting onto Bon Appetit. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, you missed all the like Bon Appetit scandal. Oh, so I came in just for that. I was like, oh my god, I love okay. Claire. This is really interesting. Oh, it's, it's so nice to temper her chocolate. Oh. Oh dear. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah, yeah. this is problematic. Uh, it, it, it made a lot of sense because I just get just generally get like big Tory vibes from Adam Rapport. So. Big what what? Big Tory vibes. Just... Mm. Over the pond off Tory. Off-brand Tory. Yeah, off-brand Tory. Yeah, off-Broadway. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get out. You're banned. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll leave. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, You'd cook so much better without me there. So much less distraction. I realize my head's probably like not even in frame right now. I'm like doing that thing where it just keeps like disappearing down. I'm like, oh, you can see my. If people in the head. chat are like, oh, we don't get to see as much art because people's faces are in the way. You want us to get rid of the faces? It is an option. I can just yeet us from this existence for more yes. artwork for the next stream, not for this stream because I'm not I'm not yeah. a wizard. No. But I could redraw the the frames so that it's just one massive. Like two windows and then like tiny little icons first. I feel like I'm putting a lot of effort into this wheelbarrow. I mean, like just... look, just treat yourself, okay? Sometimes you need to put the effort in. Yeah, but like wheels, man. I was gonna say you don't have to reinvent the wheel. But, but like, I kind of do. 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 Uh. I would say it's gonna be incredibly small. Yeah. So if it looks janky, that's fine. Also, maybe yeah. he just has a janky wheel. Maybe that's his vibe. Yeah. I'll just put it's it in the character be... description. He moves slower because his wheel's bad. Yeah, it's going to be a shitty wheel. Like, there's mm. no... <laughs> just do a square. No Don't do a wheel, do a square. And I'll be like, it's a bad wheelbarrow, man. He hasn't invented the wheel yet. It's a square barrow. He thinks it works, but... Yeah. That's why he has to carry everything on his shoulders, because it doesn't fit in the wheelbarrow and he can't push it anywhere. It moves, but that's just about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not about laws in this uh, on this plane. That's fine. That's fine. 
Yeah, this is going to be like the week 10, isn't it? I'm probably just going to sketch back over this again and just do like... Yeah, I would keep like, I would do a sketch and then when you're done with it, or if you're like, mm, I don't know, just move on. Because yeah. uh, ultimately these will be quite small as it is. Like, the size that you see it shared on, on my shared window, oh, God. that's probably yeah. going to be the size it will be on a screen. So if you're looking at this, like, I'm looking at it, and I can't even see that it... I can barely tell that it's a wheel. Or, like, that yeah. it has individual spokes, so it doesn't need to be that detailed. Um, and that can save you some time. You're so right. Of course I am. I'm always right. I am superior. Fuck that wheel. Fuck that wheel. Move that boat. What? Bigger. That's what she oh. said. Mm. That's good enough for me. I look absolutely crazy, but I'm looking at notes on this PDF that were very small and I was human sized. And so it was not quite oh, enjoying it. Oh. What? Oh no! Look, mate, at that point, just undo. Just undo everything. Just fucked it. Ruined the flow. I hate the impropriate when you draw a line and then you move it. It makes it blurry. Right? Like, I could, I'll do it with drafts and I'm fine to move drafts around, but then the minute that I'm doing like a final layer, if I, I won't move anything. I'll rub it out and redraw it, or I'll go back. But yeah. if I move it, then the quality is like... I think I don't know if it's the same thing, but when you know when you go into like the select tool, you can change this bit of interpolation to like nearest neighbor, like these three different options. Mm -hmm. And I think that might affect how like scaling and things work. I don't know if it would do the same for like lines. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to Google what interpolation means. <laughs> I think the nearest neighbor is for like scaling things mm. or sizing things up. So like it'll just. It, it'll scale like one pixel up to like a two by two of the same pixel kind of thing, mm. as opposed to like. Yeah. Well, it's not even scaling; it's just simply moving. Well, yeah, but I think it's like maybe the same thing. So I think like bilinear does like the, um, uh, you know, it's got like little, like alpha particles, like little like pixels that are like blurry and what's the wording for it? Okay, so I'm doing a test just to, to show y'all. So you move it, and then suddenly, it's. It's blurry. Oh, but it's not being yeah. blurry. <gasps> yes. Yeah, uh, aliasing, aliasing, like anti-aliasing. Or anti-aliasing, I, I don't know what the hell it's called, but... You know, that horrible thing. Mm. All I, I know is that when I turn it on on my computer games, my fans turn on. Yes. They go wild. Speaking of computer games, have you played um, if I remember the name of the thing I was trying to remember. Um, oh my god, what's it called? Uh, Transistor, that's it. <gasps> yes. Yes. I'm just in the middle of playing it just now. I've been meaning to like buy it for so long. Because it just looks exactly like my kind of vibe. And it's very fun. Okay, I don't know what's going on, but it's not doing it anymore. Look, this is just the way it is. The minute you, you're like, oh, it does this awful, annoying thing. And then it's like, no, I'm not going to do it on stream. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, yes, I have played Transistor. I've got all the way through it. Um, I think it has replayability uh, in like six months to a year when you don't have as big a grip on the controls again. Like you let it fade and then you can go back and you can revisit both the story and the, yes. the mechanics. Yes, definitely. It's very interesting though. Like I really love the mechanics of like combining the abilities to like make new ones. Like mm. it's just it's so much fun. That is fun. Like not being down on it, it's not new, but it is a fun way of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I just um, yeah, I really like the like the programmable sword is just a very cool. What I think is good is if you have a small selection of abilities that you can combine into different things. And you have play tested all of the different options you can put them into. 
what happens is yeah. th- there was there was a game like called Warlock, the the magic of the power of the legend, or some <laughs> fluffy name like that, which was meant to be. Yeah. There are forty spells in each hand, and then you can and then you have like forty by forty combinations, and so it meant like you could cast three million spells, when really yeah. there were five spells that were good, and the other three million minus five were just awful or just invalid yeah. or just didn't yeah. make sense yeah i think yeah there was there was one that was like a i can't remember if it was recent and maybe it was the same one hmm. and there was like different typings there was like fire water lightning and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. um and then each one had it, I, I feel like it was kind of an in-between like a battle royale kind of thing, but like mm-hmm. a magic y battle royale. Um and yeah, it had like yeah, depending on which hand you picked up. Mm. Like one was like lightning and one was water, and then you could combine the two like one was poison and one was fire or something, and you could like ignite the poison with the fire. Yeah, yeah. That does sound familiar. Oh, Bioshock. Yeah. It's not it's definitely not Bioshock. Oh okay. Then. It's like a, it's like a fantasy kind of battle royale thing. But it definitely has. The oh no, I do it. know what you mean. Yeah, it's it was it was like wizards meets um, Fortnite. Like, yeah, exactly that. Exactly uh, that. Exactly. Okay, that's what I'll do. What am I doing? Okay, these uh, there are these cupboards, and I just don't know. Wait, okay, so there's a pantry, and there's also a kitchen. It's two point three. Where is that on the map? <laughs> the basement. There's a bay window. There's a there's a bathroom. I don't think it's drawn. Hang on, let me check the first floor. How many floors does this home have? Three. Okay, so we've got Wendy, storage, bathroom, bunny, and a tower. No, there's no there's no there's no kitchen. Just add it onto the side. <laughs> I don't really have that. Much. The thing is, the, the the ground floor is the biggest, um, so I'm just going to put it in the pantry, um, and the pantry can yeah. be somewhere else. Um, just because, yeah. That's fair. Also, I've already drafted everything, and I can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> Oh damn! Oh what? So you know that uh, I was working on last time the like yeah. pin up, pin up. Huh? Uh, It's all finished, but it's also now about to go live on the website. Apparently, <gasps> drop a link. Um, I will. Like scribble it on your iPad. Type yeah. drop at. Go to modify. Hit that add text. Mistype it a bunch. <laughs> Where the hell? Do, 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 do. Oh, I, 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 we'll see if it's actually if it's live live. Oh, it is! Oh my god, it's up! Oh my damn! <gasps> well, I'll show you the final design more or less actually because it there was a few little changes. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the gasping because I will just there get really get really gassy. <laughs> Ooh, that is really fun. I like the screen tone. Yeah. Yeah, that was quite fun. So that's it, roughly. Speaking of, I think you need... Okay, so there's this D&D channel that you need to look up. It's called Dunge- Dungeons and Drag Queens. And it is... Oh, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. But it's not drag people in drag playing Dungeons and Dragons. It is drag queens doing a drag show and doing a role-playing as part of the show so it's not just like oh they're in drag and they sat on a table like they full-on have like dance routines to defeat enemies and stuff i love that so you need I to like I... look them up and say hello because it is the intersection of two of your your loves <laughs> yeah i had heard i'd heard of it was it like a kickstarter or something at some point mm. no no uh... not kickstarter that i know of they're also they're french i think so um 
Yeah. yeah. They've got like music, they've got 3D production, like they have they've got it going. It's I've watched the first four episodes that are on YouTube, which was one show, like one whole show broken up into four like hour long segments. And like it's camp and it's fun and they're very much getting their feet, but I am excited to see like the next episode and what they do and stuff like that. Yeah, that's fun. Right. We've got a little scribble and we'll see that's that. Stunning. <laughs> oh sorry i just realized that the kitchen and the living room are combined oh okay that makes sense yeah so i will start taking the kitchen stuff out of the kitchen out of the pantry even You were going to say, sorry. Yeah, I was just messaging, um, it's just the person that commissioned me, was messaging me just to say it was up, but like, the person doing like the production was like, oh, could we post something on Instagram? It's like, oh, probably wouldn't do it of just the image because people might like take it and steal it. It's like, mm-hmm. well, we're not getting any sort of decent quality saved off of Instagram. Because... Yeah, like do a photo of it on a t-shirt or like yeah. do a crop of a corner with a watermark on it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, speaking of screen tones, um, Out of the Blue is open on Monday, and I have Ooh. things to print. Exciting. Um, I'm going to get all the maps and the minis for the in the red campaign printed, because in theory, I should be able to send the book off to print in the next week or so, and the book will then be the last thing that I need to fulfill, and then I can start actually fulfilling this damn project. So I've, I've been trying so hard to get finished. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. background was cute. Thank you. That is from your degree show. Yeah, that's the the cover for my comic. Love it. Lovely. Way back. Love. Oh, I'm going blind. I'm looking for these goddamn cupboards. Where's that description? Because there's a magpie's cupboard, and then there's another cupboard. Look, I'm just going to draw some cupboards just how it is mm-hmm. I'm just kind of drew like an accidental like weird backward like goat leg and I'm like well what if like the person with the wheelbarrow had a goat leg <laughs> It's that magic, man. It's that magic, man. Got to be, so like, got to be oh. wary about the goats and the legs. They're contagious. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna just end up looking like fell from <laughs> Hercules. Got a like chunky sat- satyr. Um... So this is the thing. Also talking of games, have you played The Last of Us Two? No, I haven't played the first one. Because, no spoilers, <laughs> first of all, no spoilers, um, but, like, I'm watching it, like, a, a live playthrough. Yeah, on... I think I might do that, because I think it would, I wouldn't mind watching it and playing it. Yeah, I'd recommend watching a playthrough, just because it would be, um, it's cheaper than buying a PS4. Oh, uh, well, I already have a PS4, I just don't have the game. Oh. Um... <laughs> well, well, maybe I... buy it then, because, honestly, like, it's going to be a more personal experience if you play it. Yeah, I think it actually might have been one of the free games at one point, which I may have. I don't know. Yeah, I'm you'll have The Last of Us 1, but I'm talking about 2. Yeah, for sure. But I would play... Yeah. I would, yeah, yeah, you would you either play or watch the first one and then the second one because uh, it would not be nearly as powerful in reverse. But yes. I'm watching it, and honestly, I, I'm really, really enjoying it. Mm-hmm, good. Um, I think it's a, a strong story, very character-driven. There's a lot mm-hmm. going on. 
Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I've seen a lot of like good feedback from it. And obviously, mm. like everyone's been like, "Oh, hey, it has those muscles," but like, shut up. Oh god, yeah, I've, I've seen that, and honestly, like, I just don't understand. That's the one I, thing I will say is that like, in a world with fake mushroom zombies, a woman can't have muscles. Right. It's just like men need to just shut up. Yeah. Myself included. Like I will fully include myself in that category. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, I just like I don't get it. I don't well, understand. educate yourself then. Yes, it's not that hard. But I just it's kind of one of those things that you just like see the actions and you're like, what the like what? Mm-hmm. Like step one. Is this woman is in the apocalypse? Step two, woman gets muscles. Not yeah, a lot of leaping. Like, person's great. Like I don't. I, what? Mm-hmm. But anyway. Um, hmm. Closing, 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 closing. Oh, okay. This guy is not going to be the guy with the wheelbarrow. The wheelbarrow is just there, but I'm liking the character. Do you ever just like, this is, I don't know, maybe this is just me. We just draw a mark, like a line and a mark, and you're just like, yes, I like how this looks. And then just like pieces together the whole character. I don't know. In my head, well, I mean, like, that's what, that's what illustration is at its heart. It's taking the right marks and sort of capturing the element of a character. Yeah. Um, just, like, like I like that that sort of like necklace, glasses, maybe whatever it is that's kind of dangling from his neck, and then like the, the shape of his nose and his forehead, and yeah. and like the head. Sh- I'm like, perfect, got it, I love it. Oh, glasses, you're right. It's, they weren't glasses. It was meant to be like the kind of lacy. Like, I, you know, but this shirt. is the thing that's so beautiful about it is that I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't make them more distinct. No, because oh, I'm gonna give him glasses because he looks kind of hot. The glasses. <laughs> I mean, sure, but I liked that it's non-distinct because it's about the interpretation. That's what I love about really quite loose illustration. Yeah. Because you can get really quite um, highly, uh, what's the word, like finished artwork. Um, And that's in its own right gorgeous. But what I like is that it's with like illustration that's loose and goose, a loose goose. Loosey goosey. Excuse, yeah, I have a goosey. It's a goosey made the goosey on the loosey. Watch mm. out for the goosey. What? What did she say? What? Okay. I don't think I said anything bad. Okay, I thought you said something <laughs> else that wasn't goosey. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, dear. No, honey. No. <sighs> no, no, no. Foulness. <laughs> On oh, my no. Christian stream? <laughs> from from my mouth? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, anyway. I'm too lazy. Do you get... Do you ever, first of all, do you ever use drawing assist? And second of all, do you ever get too lazy to turn it off to get like a precise measurement? So you just sort of like keep dabbing with the pen <laughs> to like get, I to just, often, yeah. I don't often use it. I have used it a couple of times and it has been very helpful when needed. Like I've been using it, uh, I use it when I do isometric uh, sort of like battle location maps because um, ain't nobody got time to figure out isometric. Absolutely. Not isometric not. even. Um, no, no, no. I mean, I've got like, good grasp. I feel like I've got a relatively good grasp on it, mm. but I definitely have a lot to just have that there. Mm-hmm. Um, I could definitely like riff off enough to be like somewhat convincing, but it is extremely helpful having that there for when you do need it. Um, but that was, yeah, I did a lot of like the like techie drawing mm. at high school. Because I, I actually was 
possibly uh, go, went to study to be an engineer for a long time as well. Oh, engineering. treat yourself. Engineering and robotics uh, and or mechatronics, which is like automating processes. Hmm. Like cool. Um, but no, I went to art school and thinking I was going to do graphic design and ended up going to draw for a living, so that's fun. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It just do. gets us all. <laughs> it catches us all. In the end. Yeah, it gets you all in the end. There's no running away. There's no running from your true fate. Mm. Ooh, so Last of Us is very brutal. Um, yeah. Like, it, it just does not stop. Okay, interesting. Um, it's really fun, but it is so intense. Yeah, I kind of get that vibe. Like, it seems like a very emotionally charged game. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I guess it's... And also, canon, it's gay, so that makes it ten times better. Oh, like, it's it's interestingly gay. What's really fun, Ooh. there's no homophobia. Well, okay. Like, I know what you mean. No, no, no. As in, that first of all, it doesn't feel like it was written for a straight white male crowd. So there's no heterosexual cis het lens, which is love. Love it. Instantly, that makes it a ten. So that likes that make. Oh, it's a nine, and there's a ten because we're living in a post-apocalyptic world, right? So there are like people who are fifty and sixty, and they still Mm -hmm. have a lot of old views. Yeah. Um, but the younger generation have grown up without any of that trapping. Like they've grown up from the age of like seven or eight with none of that because no one has a time to teach about homophobia when you're trying to survive a long term zombie apocalypse. That is also so very everyone true. is just like cool with it, and it's not even like a, oh my god you're gay. Like they don't even ever have to speak about it. It's just like there's no yeah. ever distinction that like oh a woman loves a woman. It's so, like a person loves a person, and they, they talk about relationships on an individual level, not like a yeah, the way it should be. Yeah, in an ideal world, when well, the way that really God not... intended it, an absolute mess. Yes, when it's not an apocalypse. Um, feet and shoes are not happening here. <laughs> shoes cancelled. Forget. Like sometimes you just draw like one line. You're like, nope, that makes the foot look completely backwards. Um, I'm going to add a note to fix that. <laughs> note to yeah. self, just do better. Just fix it, god damn it. Oh my god, I love that posture. Yeah, I like as soon as he was kind of leaning over slightly, I was like... I like, would oh, love it if he's leaning forward with like an open hand and behind he's got a dagger. Yeah, it's either like... I, I don't want it to be too obvious, but it's definitely going to have like an open hand like it kind of come here. Mm-hmm. So come like, hither and die. It's going to be like... There's a cutlass back there? Like, I don't know. A cutlass... <laughs> <laughs> Yar! <laughs> <laughs> just a dying cleaver. Mm-hmm. Oh, just a wet, it's just a fish. It's just going to slap you with a fish. Uh, Bam. Through, through the frickin', oh, wait, I can just undo. I'm not keeping the cleaver. So. Like, also, oh, hello to J Lister. Oh, How is thou? Hello, friend. We're working on fantasy adventure stuff, so clearly we have to speak in ye old English. Ye oldie words. Mm-hmm. Um. <sighs> forearm. Okay, so there were shelves, and they were right. doing shelf things over here. Wait, what hand is it? It also doesn't help that I can't remember my left and right. Like, I just have a complete mm-hmm. inability. Don't wreck Shasta have, like... Just two left hands. Excuse me, who? What? Rakshasa. Demon cat people. Oh. (laughs) So offended. Like that makes a difference there. What are they called? Rakshaka? What? Rakshasa. I will will spell it. Hang on. Rakshasa. Like E. Yes. It is spelt like so. Interesting. Oh yeah. Oh wait, yeah. They do have. Oh why? Why do they have two left hands? Because they're demons. It was AD and D. They very much took. They they adulterated a lot of old uh, mythology and then got it wrong. So. Yeah. I mean, this one's really cool. Like no shadow of a lie. 
It's wow. probably had like a really significant reason and um, has been gotten wrong. Yeah, mm. just kind of bastardized and. Mm. Yes. Right. I need to draw like a weird claw hand. Oh, wait, is he actually going to be a tiger person? Ooh. Oh no! Oh, but, I mean, you know, why not? I mean, this is what I was going to say. Not a tiger person. Scottish wildcat person. Ooh, bobcat. Uh, not bobcat. We don't have bobcats. Do we not? There was oh. a bobcat. Class. Hold up. <laughs> the bobcats. I swear. Okay, so bobcats are like a, a, an American thing. Yes. Yeah. We yeah, have yeah. Scottish forest cats, which look more like Norwegian forest cats. Like they look like. Big furry cats, but also they're lethal. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Back in my kind of home, I say town village, out in the middle of nowhere up in Aberdeenshire, mm. uh, there was supposedly for a while, like, uh, what was it? The Beast of Benahee. was like oh. the kind of. Benahee was the. It's the kind of. I say it the mountain range. The kind of close hill peaks that are just close by. But uh, there was supposedly, like, People said it was a panther or like some sort of black shadowy cat that it definitely couldn't have been. Mm. It was just like a wild cat. But there's just like all these like tales of like the beast of Benahi, like this wild cat that just clubs about <laughs> doing wild things. Love that. Just cuts about. It cuts about. It's just finding his own business. Yeah. To be honest, you were really in the way. Like he was just doing he was just doing his thing and well, you I came along. And made the full decision to anger him. Yeah, I'm fully on the cat's side. Like, the people just irritated him. I'm like, you know what? You brought this upon yourselves. Like, mm -hmm. the curse of the beast. Ooh, that thumb does not look fun. It doesn't look thumb. Oh, ha ha! You're such a comedian! Ha ha ha! Aha! To quit your day job and. <laughs> I, 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 I have. I've quit my day job. Good for you, you're halfway there to being a comedian. Well, you know, Dungeons and Dragons isn't making that much money anymore. Well, things have halted. Thank you, Miss Rona. You're welcome. Hanny. How, how, how do hands work again? Right, that's oh. weird. The eternal question. So, I want to put this fireplace that's between two rooms, like it's an open hole. That is a fire that feeds into both rooms, but unfortunately Ooh. the wall is tall enough that it completely covers the other side of the fireplace, which is mm. upsetting me. Could you just I, just stretch it a little bit further to have like an indication that it's there? That's what I'm trying to do, but it's like I've got like this tiny little little bit here mm. that's really not even a little a little like kind of well, I say horizontal, but you're kind of mm. at 45. yeah. So just a horizontal line there, with like a tiny little bit of the circle. Just like mm -hmm. the tiny little sliver to just indicate that it's there. Like that. Yeah, I think that's just like, even just like, it doesn't have to be, you push it forward a wee bit if you need to add thickness to the oh, wall. Oh, hang on. No, so basically like, the hole for the fireplace would be like here-ish. Yeah. And then this is further up the wall here, where you've got the mantelpiece over the top of it. Yeah. So like, that's where like, logs would be coming out. Maybe I could have like a stack of logs here. And maybe like yeah. a basket with some fire pokers. Yeah, definitely. I think you can definitely yeah. indicate that it's on both sides. Big old fire coming out both sides. Meh. Meh. Hmm. Also, um, Jay Lister says uh, that the whole gang have been uh, enjoying talking about uh, the stream and are watching it and have fun. So, hello, gang. Who's who's the gang? Um. I think it gives away, but Jay uh, J, J Lister was the one who commissioned the map. It also Aww. is just cool. Aww. So, like, the whole D&D group are watching. Oh, that's so sweet. Aww. Well, hi. You can see what Brian's up to and what I'm up to. Doodling things. Google. You know when you draw a hand at the wrong angle, but, like, or the right angle... But like you don't really know where to put the thumb, so you just add like this weird knob in the background, mm -hmm. and you hope that it's. So you hope people realize it's like the thumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's the tweet. Mm -mm. <laughs> just no more context. No more hints. 
You thought you were playing on easy mode? There's no hints here. There's no hints here. Ooh, that arm's not right. Hmm. We love perspective and things. No, we don't. Perspective is for suckers. Just go full surrealist. I have like all tassels to this. Just leave. Oh, actually, speaking of surrealist, um, shout out to my Patreon where I did this battle map that folds in on itself, uh, like an Escher style. Oh, drawing. Yeah. So in theory, you can move anywhere and all of the surfaces work as ground floors and oh, it's a headache to draw, but it's it. I oh, want to cool. play it. I legitimately like, I'm going to, I'm going to run like a single game. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that would make an excellent one shot for uh, World's End. Mm. That would be such a mind fuckery. Or like when you're fighting the wizard in his sanctum. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, when's a... Um, oh, God, Critical Role's obviously back now. Yeah. Are they just back to their same schedule of like, releasing the video on Mondays, you think? Uh, yeah. I mean, I have my sister's Twitch. Um, oh, nice. Because... Uh, but yeah, so I've watched half of it because there's so much stuff to watch. Um, really everything's come back, like, July, so... Yeah. And it feels like I'm working, like, full-time now. Yeah, you've been a busy bee. Yes. Okay, I'm liking where this character is. I'm really hoping that Atlanta Norvair are watching right now, because I have so many cool ideas for Beast Fables. <laughs> it's just like, don't be watching. Avert yeah. your eye. If you're watching, like... Muted it could like be spoilers, or it might not be. Hmm, I might just do something else. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we're going to be doing... Mortal Bearings, which is the system that I wrote that is drafted. Um, it's like a tack-on system that allows you to do improvised encounters, but gives okay. the DM like prepared scenarios. So essentially, there are like seven scenarios that you can choose from from a table. The table is the kind of like scenario you're in. So it could be like traveling, and then it's got seven travel encounters, right? Right. Um, okay. But each one on the table has a fortune. You give three random fortunes to your players, and the players choose the fortune that they sound they think would be make the most interesting story, or like okay. uh, that they think is most interesting. And then you use that encounter, so they have an inkling of what's to come, and they feel invested because they've chosen the fortune, but they still don't know what's actually going to happen. Yeah. And you have like a, a base like encounter to work from. Okay, that's really fun. That's reminding me of, um, I don't know if you have seen or heard of it, but Heart, um, the RPG. Uh, Heart the Spire? Heart the Spire, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, because really cool dude illustrated it, I backed it, I think I have the PDF. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah, I, I did the same. Um, so the books should all be kind of, I don't know, at some point. I've just put my parents' home address because I don't know where I'll be living. Um, <laughs> like, I'm yeah, still... Yeah, mood, nothing mood. Wrong. Closure. I'm still like safe in my current home, but I was meant to be living in Glasgow by now. You were um, going to move to Glasgow? Yeah. News. That was the plan. Um, me and my flatmate were planning on shifting to Glasgow. Um, yeah, she's kind of got family close by and like mm. a, 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 a nephew, which she misses a lot. And also, would just be like quite like to be along there. And also, like, there's just a bit more in the way of jobs and things there. Yeah, Ugh, I applied for a. Um... I found out today. Uh, I applied for a, a BBC uh, film and TV apprenticeship, oh, right. um, mm -hmm. where basically I would be like making thirteen k uh, mm -hmm. over nine months, but uh, I'd also be getting a degree out of it uh, in oh. film and TV, and obviously a bunch of work experience. So yeah. I was really happy to do that, and they've just replied because I got to the final round, and they were like, "Oh, we're actually cancelling this because COVID." Oh so, no! Yeah. They're like, "Oh, we'll redo the scheme in twenty twenty one." But you'll have to reapply, which sucketh. Oh, that that really does suck. Actually, that's very. God, that's just very poopy of them. How dare they? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, that sucks. But at least, like you know, 
you managed to get through like one time. Mm -hmm. you know, so hopefully you can do the same again. Because um, it does sound very good. I should hope that no talent at all shows up. <laughs> like if you are thinking of doing film for like the next year in Scotland, just don't. Yeah, just don't. Give me a just chance. Hold off for like a year, please. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Anything the BBC? <laughs> nah. Or reply and be like, hey, I'm just telling you to go for Brian. <laughs> Vote for Brian. Brian for president. An apprenticeship for Brian is an apprenticeship for Brian. <laughs> Get that tautology. Except for when it goes right, and then I'm like, yes, here, done well. <clears throat> and this might be one of those times. You know, I'm into that. That's fine. That works for me. <laughs> oh wait, wait, hold on. Where were we? Last week. Yes. My, uh, I remember I told you my D and D character leveled up again. Oh, they've done it again. Well, not again. So I've got two different ones. So my other character had leveled up. Mm. Uh, I was kind of waiting for the magic item to be custom crafted for him. Uh, and it's a very cool one for my wild magic Sorlock. Mm -hmm. so he is wild magic sorcerer and uh, celestial warlock. So a little bit of a healing, uh, which is always useful. But the this kind of general, like rough backstory thing is like he kind of harmed someone with the wild magic that he much regrets. And like the kind of lack of control is always kind of scared him. So that's mm -hmm. why he took a steel path to kind of heal anyone that he may have maimed. But then also just like he's generally looking for better control. And so the adventure that we were on, he found this weird like eldritch worm, which was like in this can that we kept it in stasis. Um, and the DM then crafted that item or crafted that into the magic item. It basically lets him store a wild magic spell in it temporarily. Mm. It's like a battery for wild magic. It's very cool. So very excited to be using that in the next game. That does sound exciting. He's my baby boy, yeah. So uh, some of the encounters I've been thinking of for... Beast Fables oh, yeah. includes uh, Predators. Because essentially with uh, Beast Fables is you kind of, you prepare a bunch of, oh, not Beast Fables, but with Mortal Bearings, you, pre you pre uh, prepare a bunch of uh, encounters and then you just see what the players want to do. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking of um, like some Predators, encounters, yeah. not necessarily like actively getting, oh my God, it's just looking at the head, the, the head. It's so tiny compared to like the Barbarian who's like, yeah, no. <laughs> Move them into better space. Mm. Move that is a lovely. Um, I don't say this often. That's good head. Uh, <laughs> ah. sure, sure is. Cursed. 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 Mm -hmm. Kind of bigger, or just trying to squeeze a tiny character in like these little like fucking weird spaces. What if that was the character? That's the tweet. Floating head. Floating head. Send tweet. Um, oh. Yes, and characters. Predators. Yes. Um, I've been thinking about uh, how awesome it would be uh, to have just seeing a predator. Like, maybe they walk into a clearing and they just a predator arrives and they just... It's like a hawk and they just, they're like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm just a wee little farmer mouse. Oh, God! And a hawk just like... Whoosh, Takes them off. Yep. I love it. And they're left standing there like, what, what do we do? And the hawk like just flies off. Tears yeah. the guy in half, like you know, a mile away. Oh wait, like they come across a like 
Yeah, like a lovely little farmer who's like, oh, can you give us directions? The farmer's like, oh, yes, you just want to go. Ah! Dead. I love that. And yeah. just like the kind that. of the, the the blink blink moment you'd get in like a cartoon where they go, okay. It's like the little, uh, like the Pikachu face. It's just like. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's how I should do it. It shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be encounters. It should just be memes. You get seven different memes, and then you're like, right, okay, that's the basis of my encounter. Oh my god. Oh god, choose a meme. Oh my god. Or um, maybe, no, the memes are the fortunes. You just you just send them three memes, and you're like, pick a meme. And they go, uh, Pikachu face? Okay. Oh, honey. <laughs> uh, you regret that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fun. Terrible, but fun. So to anyone who's ever been curious about how I do uh, like locations and buildings and stuff is I draw out the format, I draw out the walls, then I uh, figure out uh, where everything is in like blocks, and then I go through and do specific details. So you can see here that I've got furniture on another layer, so it doesn't get confusing, but you can see that I've drawn out like the perspective of the, the walls, and I've only gone about five feet up, so in theory some the walls are lower than they actually are, so that some furniture can poke over the walls or be seen that the backs of and stuff like that, which can make it really cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. I just had a little moment there of realizing this character would look very cool as like a kind of um, Kelpie. Mm -hmm. like oh, a, like a horse. A, like a mane. Yeah, but like would turn into a horse. I'm vibing. Oh, Kelpie Centaur. Ooh. Kelpor. A Kelpor. Oh no, because that means I've got to draw horse legs. That's absolutely not happening. <laughs> I think you know. Take that suggestion back because it's it's cursed. Never happening. Mm -hmm. Spine, body, who, who? No, um, hmm. no, 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 no. Oh crap! There's gonna be a window there. <laughs> Damn windows getting in the way. Well, the wardrobe's getting in the way of the window. Oh, even worse. I hate it when that happens. Right. Silent thinking. Hmm? Silent thinking. Yes. I do this sometimes, and I'm sure other artists do. It's not like a, I'm unique. <laughs> oh, I'm so quirky. I think sometimes. Uh, sometimes yeah. more. I'm just trying to, like... So I know that you were cutting stuff out, but, like, the... That shape of hair was also very interesting. I think, like, large, long hair would be... As in, like, hang on. You you had the head, like, uh, like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, because you were selecting around, you did, like, sort of, like, this sort of shape. 
And I thought that was actually really interesting if maybe there was like a character who's got just really big, bouffanty, oh, right. long hair. Yeah, it's like my god, a huge. Yeah. Can the whole body. That's quite fun. I also like that. Um, like these poses are really cool. Um, I as like a general really... like to anybody doing any character minis when drawing them. I know that a lot of people are very tempted to do like. Ah, oh, the front, and they're standing T pose front on, and the back, they're standing T pose from back on. Yeah. I like it when they're, sli they're they're turned slightly. The point of the front and back is to give the illusion of movement when you're moving the counters around physically. But like yeah. these dynamic poses are the most interesting. It's always yeah. good to have like just full front on because that can convey a lot about a character. But this more shy, kind of held, looking over. Yeah. Even if that's your front on, because this would be the front on of the character. The front is where the, the face is orientated. But like yeah. this tells so much about the character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Mini Gush, I just love your character design, dude. Thank you. How nice of you. No, thank you, that's very nice of you. I just yeah, because that's one thing I always just try and like I do always default when I'm just sketching characters to just do the kind of like three quarters, like arms by the side or kind of like just one arm up kind of thing. Mm. And I guess like it has its place sometimes when you're just like trying to figure things out. But yeah, like I think 60% of a character is like the way they hold themselves. Is anyone else watching? We have got four current viewers. That we have had um, 11 playbacks and stream health. It, apparently the stream is very healthy. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's wearing its mask. It's using antibacterial gel when it goes outside. I don't know how many unique viewers we've had, but all of you matter we treasure you you all the bits stop just realized i didn't give the kitchen a cooker which means it's not really a kitchen this is something that i am rectifying mm -hmm. A little water break, stay hydrated, and also a uh, best golf break. This stream is sponsored by water. <laughs> sponsored by H2O and best golf. I feel like that should be like to make your your show cool you should always have a sponsor and the sponsor's like oh if you don't have a sponsor it's like oh this show is sponsored by water. <laughs> Nature's secret to life. Mm. This show is sponsored by Oxygen. Breathe it, baby. <laughs> Breathe it, baby. Baby. It's good for you. Where did that meme come from? The baby. Oh, baby. baby. I don't know. I say it a lot. Because I, I hear it a lot. <laughs> oh, no, you know who it is or what it is. Well, yeah, who it is, I guess. It's, uh, have you ever watched Potterless or listened to Potterless, the podcast? No. So it's this guy who has never read or seen, well, he's seen a couple of the Harry Potter films, mm. but he's never read any of the books. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, yeah, and he's like 26, like a grown man. And so he's like reading through it for the first time. And like, obviously it's like a children's book. Like it's for kids, but he just has like these super like critical reviews of them, but they're also <laughs> just like really funny. And he's just a very like charismatic guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he does like stand up comedy, which is why he's like very good and like quick witted. Um, but yeah, he's just he's just funny. But he says that a lot. He's like, "Yeah, sure thing, baby." <laughs> like a lot of emphasis on the baby. I don't know. Got to emphasize those babies. No one else will. No one else will. No one else. Don't put baby in the corner. No one cares. There, have a bit of drapery to hide things. 
so feet. Why do I keep fucking drawing feet? Why do all characters have to have feet? You've got Where? a problem. <laughs> Fix it. Okay, stunning. Oh, I don't want to draw this horse. You know who uh, this haircut is given to get inspiration from? Have you been watching Snowpiercer at all? The series on Netflix? No. Is it good? It's really good. Okay, um, because one of the reasons I wasn't watching it is because I was like, mm, is this good? Or is this just, like, badly racist? No, actually. It's actually very, very good. Okay. What I think, at least. Um, I... Trailers, I mean, Americans are terrible at doing trailers. Like, all of the trailers I do are awful. But it gave me very, very strong token black vibes from the trailer. So I was like, eh, I'll wait till someone else tells me it's good. Which yeah. is now. Uh, no, yeah, I, I think I really like it. I think it's like, it it works well, like, to his character's story. Like, it's not, like, like it's very, like, the whole system of the train is based on, like, class suppression, mm. essentially. But I like throughout all the all the different um, like sections of the the like there's like three different sections of the or four technically of the train. It's like first class, second class, third mm-hmm. class, and then the tailies. They're just like the stowaways. Mm. Like the, the cast is super diverse, I think, or well, relatively diverse. It's got like uh, like people of color and like black and people of color mm. throughout the whole cast. I think it's pretty good. Um, but it's good. It's good fun. But this one of the characters uh, is like I don't know if she's like a police officer or like the equivalent to like a train enforcement police mm. officer. Got so this like badass haircut. There's like shave. It's like an under hidden undercut. But like when mm-hmm. she has her hair down, it's like just like a bob, and you can't Ooh. tell. And then she wears it back, and she has like a kind of fringe over the front, and like it's tied back, and like a kind of like Ooh. Yeah, it's really cool. I can't remember what her character name is. Um, I just um, Google, like, Snowpiercer, cool haircut, Bob Lady. Yeah. Oh, what's her name? No, we're on a TV show. Are we ever going to get to the point where you stop calling them TV shows? Like, there's a whole well, there is a whole generation growing up where they're Netflix exclusives. No one watches stuff on TV anymore, at least not young people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and of course, we haven't even talked about this bit. Um, David Diggs, the guy that plays the main character, just made me remember. Um, actually, you know what? Looking at the cast lineup, it is like relatively white. So this is the thing. Jay Lister has said the new Snowpiercer is a lot gayer than the movie. I didn't know it was a, a movie. Um, and they added a lot of stuff in. It's got a lot more world building than the movie did, which I enjoy. Again, yeah. didn't know there was not a movie. So, or there was a movie. So I shall just yeah. go straight to the Netflix exclusive series. Yeah, just go to the series. Yeah. Um, the movie is weird because it was like a weird... Um, it's the director that did Parasite. Uh, it was like his... Ooh. Um, it's actually really it's a pretty good film um but like the lead character is chris one of the many chrises who are famous for being a chris um yeah, right i found the character's name uh mickey no sumner snowpiercer right here we go She just has like this bad, like it's just badass. Oh, that is nice. Oh, yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. Side, she looks she really familiar. Off. Yeah, she, she can. Has she done other off. stuff? But then when it's down, it's just like a regular like bob kind of or yeah. kind of shoulder length here. There we go. I I like the idea of it being like uh, like you've got that very much like hair up business death hair down. Oh, hello boys. Yeah, yeah. super. Super, super, super I like good. versatile haircuts like that. Yeah, it's really good. Um, what I love is um, a haircut where it's 
Like it's nice long hair or like they've done like a nice cut to it. But then when they get all like muddy and bloody and it's like gore and they're just like, ah, and the hair is just, it looks great even when it's a mess. Like it yeah. looks better when it's completely destroyed. Yep. It's like Witcher. Mm, like Witcher hair. Yeah, like the Witcher's hair where it's like, oh, it's all tied up and I'm great. And then he's like fighting a monster in the bog and it's like, Bleh! and it's just, yeah. It's yeah. Hard in mud. Somehow it still looks amazing. Mm hmm. You know. Just hair things. Just hair things. Just hair things, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That. Yes. The guy that plays the lead in Snowpiercer, David Diggs, I think it was, uh, also plays in Hamilton. Have you seen Hamilton? It's on Disney+. Plus. Have seen Hamilton. It's so good. So, this has raised a lot of interesting conversation that I'm really glad is happening. Um, I rate it, because I'm not... I'm like... Not a massive musicals fan, right? No, neither was I. But I can appreciate it. I rate it an 8 out of 10. It's not oh, Cirque yeah. du Soleil uh, theatrics, and there are some slightly gimmicky elements to it. Yeah. Um, like, no spoilers. Uh, at one point, some uh, uh, guns are fired, and every time a, a gun is fired, someone runs in and pretends to be the bullet. Like, an actual person runs yeah. in. And like, okay, sure, do your thing. Um, yeah. And that makes it feel more like a like a Japanese Japanese Saturday night, like 3D or like a, a effects film where someone runs in in a green screen suit holding a yeah. bullet. And it's a bit like, ah! <laughs> yeah, like that. That's fair. But I think it's yeah. like, the, but, the scene where it happens, I think is very effective. Because yeah. like, the time, like mm. that bit. Well, well. It, they're in other scenes as well. Yes, they are. They yeah. are. The bullets are in other scenes. And I feel like, yeah, anyway. But as a whole, all of the music, very good. You need to see, like, the music is coordinated to the thing. You can't... I know there are a lot of people who listen to the soundtrack and then go see it and they're like, oh my god, amazing, and then all the words before they even go. I tried listening to the soundtrack. I couldn't understand it or what yeah. they were singing about without seeing the actions. Um, yeah. I had listened to it a lot. I think that for the end of my honors year, I must have listened to that in the last, like, two months at least 30 times. Like, I would just put it wow. on. Just, like, I've listened to it... I, fucked up a big a big lot um and i love it at and least like the one jobby's worth it, yeah and the more you listen to it the more it fits makes sense mm. or like little connections that you make because i'm really not good at like listening to things and like paying attention to lyrics like what the word yeah that's is. the other thing is like i i struggle to pay attention to lyrics so i have to be like I have to have my full attention and I struggle to have my full attention on music on its own unless it is music designed to be listened to on its own like yes. knowing that I'm missing something because I'm not seeing like stage directions or something it just it turns me off yeah that's fair but again um, I think when you watch it on the scene there's so many bits you're like oh, oh god yeah of course and all these things are syncing up and I really liked um the Skylar sisters introduction yes um that was some really nice harmonies, and then they came back as like thematic music throughout the thing. Oh, it comes in so much, and the same as "Wait for It" as well. I love that song. Mm. That's one of my favorite ones. Okay, so uh, Jay Lister says, "I found it really funny that we're talking about the spoils of Hamilton when it's based on real people, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. Hamilton spoilers for the Battle of Yorktown. Mm, it happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on yes, yes. Spoilers. But I feel like that's one of the most interesting things is that apparently." my understanding is that this is not a piece of history that is talked about a lot. Yes. Even though it is very consequential, which is why um, the dude who, mm -hmm. whose name I know. Um, you he, made me forget now. You know, he's hot and he does musicals and he's really talented and whatever. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Him. yeah. Him. So he wrote this because he wanted this as a piece of history to be more accessible and also inclusive. Yeah. Like, yes, the whole probably. concept of it is great. And that brings me on to the thing that I now feel even more justified about being angry. Because I thought, you know, I'll never get to see this. It's £200 a ticket. You have yeah. to book, like, five years in advance and sell your child into slavery to get there. Uh, yeah. No one except the rich get to see this. Yes. Um. And now that I have seen it, and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, it's a good 8 out of 10. I'm like, how much more or how much better could the world have been if media like this was openly accessible four years ago? Yeah. I understand the need to keep the show... <laughs> Jellister said, no Hamilton spoilers. I don't know if he's dead yet. 
<laughs> yeah, 400 years ago. I mean, he might be kicking about. He might be cutting about, you know, in North America. Ooh. It's in secret, you know. You never know. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, Ill- <laughs> the Illuminati twist at the end. Oh, oh. Uh, and yes, thank you to Will, who was watching before, for uh, Bong Joon-ho, the director of mm. the original Soul Peter film and uh, Parasite, which is also great if you've not seen Parasite. Parasite's also really good. Really, really good. Oh, uh, kind of. It's very intense. Um, mm-hmm. I had to like just sit down somewhere quiet afterwards. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah, it's very like oh wow, it's quite a a, a load there. Um, what was I thinking? Yeah, I was mm-hmm. super super fortunate. Me and some of my flatmates managed to somehow managed to get tickets mm. uh, to go and see Hamilton live, and like yeah, we booked it like over a year and a half in advance, and like. We're like, okay, let's hope we're all still friends by that point, because otherwise... <laughs> well, this is the other thing, is that, like, you can't... Especially with the world that a lot of younger people and also poorer people live in, you can't make a commitment a year and a half in the future when you're struggling to make rent now. Like, yeah. it, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. And I just think, like, especially in the context of, like, Black Lives Matter and all these other, other things, like... This is a really good musical, and it's really informative, but the whole purpose was to make it so that theatre, or at least one of the goals of it, was to make theatre more approachable to yeah. people of colour. And I'm just like, okay, great. And then you locked it behind a paywall that only white people could afford. Yeah. Now, I know there yeah. were lots of schemes in America to get, you know, all sorts of different people who normally would be able to get to the theatre to Hamilton to see it. But, yeah. like, get some stuff. Yeah. and I also understand why it costs so much, because obviously um, all of these actors are getting paid and just so, like in some senses it is worth it but like after two years you've paid off the show you've paid off everybody they've yeah. made their money it should be accessible i don't get why four years later this is the first one and it's only accessible for a short amount of time like it's mm-hmm. limited access it'll be up for a couple of weeks and it'll be gone again oh really yep that's the thing it's not like oh now it's out there now obviously the minute it hit disney like people have pirated this like oh, they'll yeah. have recorded the whole thing and it'll be available on Pirate Bay. But like you couldn't even pirate it before. You couldn't access it even yeah. legally because obviously they had very, very strict measures to make sure that it was never recorded. Yeah. And absolutely. I just the zinester in me is like you're going against the whole point of art when you yeah. monotonize it like this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And I say monotonize, not monetize, but monotonize because it's it's boring. It makes it unattractive. It turns your audience off of off of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a really difficult one because obviously, like, theater itself is kind of dying a bit, which is a shame. Yeah. Uh, like, like this is my... it's theater history. Yeah. For a show my... to do this well. Yeah, absolutely. One of my good friends and like old flatmates um, who I lived with for three years. Mm-hmm. Um, she is now down stu- studying in Wales, uh, doing like theatre production or no, like theatre set production, mm. um, which has been super super cool. Like seeing all the stuff that she's been making is very fun, um, but it is a wee shame because it's just like, just the other day she was like, "Yep, yeah, you know, like great that Hamilton's on, but like you know, maybe the only way we'll see it because theatre is dying." It was like, it was like, oh, it's so sad. It was a shame. Because, but yeah, it's it is like it does feel very like inaccessible for the most part. Like I've seen some other things, like because uh, you can get like the tickets relatively cheap when you're like down in London. You buy them like on the day for like kind of shit seats. But even then, that's the thing, kind of shit seats, which again is another accessibility thing. It's like you get a, a worse viewing of this because you can't afford even like decent seats. And then also, on top of that, you have to go on a chance that there are tickets available and have the money to go just spend a day in London. Exactly. Like not everyone exactly. can do that. Not a, like I know that London is, London itself has a higher population than the whole of the UK, including Scotland yeah. combined. Like London's yeah. population is like 20, 30 million or something like that. Super really? condensed. Um, and Scotland is like five, six million. So yeah. I understand that obviously like culture is centered there, but like people just can't do it especially when trains are privatized and so expensive and everything else. <gasps> Your pen is at 4%, babe. Yeah, I know. That's why I just realized like it wasn't responding. And I was like, uh-oh. So I'm going to take a little break. Hang on. Where's my pen at? Ah, 82. Babe. 
Ugh. Yeah, so... Opinions. Display. Here we go. Where's the thing? Auto lock. Let's turn this off for just now. Because I might just quickly go and boil the kettle again and leave it on the screen. Yeah, I'm going to go and quickly boil the kettle again while I let this charge for like a hot minute. Mm -hmm. BRB. Enjoy your hot minute. Thanks. The table is way too high. Okay, how are people in chat doing? So hello to Will. I know that you popped in and then was like, hello, bonjour. Um, so hi. And to Nereen, um, yes, thank you for Lin-Manuel Miranda because everyone says that name so quickly. Oh, hang on, I have to go. I've got a delivery of food. Back in two. Shot on me as I. Ooh, what are you doing? <laughs> Where have you gone? <laughs> you just see with like a box in the distance what's going on here. Um, right, well, I guess it's just me. If anyone is watching and has any fun suggestions for Scottish themed kind of uh, character minis, go for it. Let's see what you got, people. Oh, you guys are part of the party that Brian's drawn the map for. Oh, that's so nice. Hello, everybody. I have returned. I have returned. I just saw you, like, dancing about with a box at one point, and then you disappeared, and I was like, what's going on? So, um... It's seven o'clock, guys, or it's like six forty, um, and I didn't realize the time in advance. I was getting a food delivery of frozen food. Ah, nice. nice, um, nice. Of, uh, what's the word? Um, f smoothie things. Oh, nice, lovely, and healthy. Mm. Picking up. <gasps> oh. I managed to turn the opacity all the way down to 1%. Treat you... yourself. I hate the fact that that bar's there. I want to turn that bar off. I just want to keep keep it opaque, honey. At no point have I ever done opacity and been like, hmm, love it. Yeah. I mean, I was drawing before and I thought my pencil was dead. Mm. But I was drawing absolutely... Ooh, that's such a good suggestion. Um, I asked for uh, any suggestions for, like, Scottish kind of themed characters. Uh-huh. Um, and Jay Lister has suggested uh, Scotland's known for stags. How about a stag satyr? Oh my god, yeah, stag satyr or stag on teeth. Okay, so I will say stag satyr. I, I stan. Stag on tiefling. <laughs> just because everyone loves an edgy horn, I feel like maybe lean away from it. Tieflings as a whole, I know that everyone loves a tiefling. Everyone loves it. But in my own specific, my own games, I just... Keep him at two horns, you know. <laughs> Don't get too horny with it. Ah! I mean, uh, again, we also all love a horny tiefling. 
I mean, to be fair, all tieflings are horny, but... uh, You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, I feel like there needs to be a little bit of greater depth into why you're playing a tiefling. Otherwise, they don't need the whole demon thing. It's just a dude's got horns. Yeah. Like, all the people are like, oh, I love the idea of, like, being a demon baby. And then when you weave that, like, oh, you're, you're the son of Satan into the story, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. No one said I, I was evil. And you're like, no, of course not, but your dad is. And they go, yeah. hang on. Wait Hold a minute. Up. Hold I, up, I'm not a, a demon demon. I'm just a demon. I just have horns. And I'm like, that's cool. Just have horns. Where do you think you got them from, then? Yeah. Like, if you want horns, then... Enjoy your goat baby fursona. I love it. Treat yourself. <laughs> but I feel like there's all of this like background history in like specifically Dungeons and Dragons as well, where it's like, oh, you're like corrupted from birth by the devil. Your yeah. father traded his soul to a ladybug from hell. Ladybug from hell. It's unnecessary. We love a horny aesthetic. Go for it. Yeah, mind what you're saying, Brian. Magpie from the commission has antlers. <gasps> Call that. That is, I mean, it's totally cool. This is what I'm saying. This is like from my game, and it's our game, you know, because my my friend as well was like exclusively no humans in their game or in mm. her game. Um, she's like, don't care about humans. It's a fantasy setting. There are no humans. Mm. And this is what I mean. Okay, so I'm not articulating it correctly because um, <laughs> it's like seven o'clock. Um. I am not against horns. I think horns are totally cool. I just feel like tieflings, specifically with 5th edition, have like a bajillion extra things going on when so many people just want to have horns. Yeah. You know? This is true. And I just want to be like, let let the children have horns. Let them have horns. Let them have horns. Let them have horns. Have a horn. Have a blow horn. Oh, no. Oh, where did the horn come from? Was it from a tiefling? That's maybe, like, not... Oh, God. Oh. Oh, that's messed up. And look... Having a trumpet made from a tiefling's horn. That's... Okay, I'm liking this satyr so far. It looks very Mr. Tumnus, but that's just the way things are. Well, I mean, like... Isn't that what all satyrs are? This is very true. He's going to have a little mustache. Oh, he's going to have like little mutton chops. No, he had that before as well. Hmm. Maybe they're just getting a giant beard. Oh, what if he's just like cute? What if he's just buff as hell? Just like giant. Hmm. Maybe not. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see where things get. Or looking a little bit like a Santa Claus mask, but you know. <laughs> like braided. Like giant, like no neck, just like whatever the muscles are that make like the triangle from your shoulders to your traps. I feel like that's what they are. Just the, the sexy neck muscles. Sexy neck muscles. And what was going to be his body is now just going to be his pecs, because that's <laughs> the scale we're going at now. I'm sure everyone has. Okay, so what are like, what are characters that you love? Oh, man. Like, because like, I, I know some people who legitimately would play a tiefling every single time and power to them. So who would you play every single time? Oh, right. Okay. See? This is what I mean. Like, because okay. I would play a dwarf every single time. I just love little dudes digging. Interesting. I have never played a dwarf. Well, actually, no. I played a dwarf for one game that was like one and a half sessions. Mm. Uh, my friend just had this like one idea for like a very like just like basically like a bit and crafted like a really small one shot around mm. it well you know what props to you like i want to try uh, this idea out and mm, it's not fun let's stop <laughs> it was it was fine it was like some sort of weird like 
I, I can't even remember. It was like a very like strange concept mm-hmm. that I just couldn't wrap my head around. It was some sort of like uh, philosophy philosopher. Oh wow! Person. I don't know. It was weird. I was like, you know what? This is quintessential you. You do you. I'm here to help you have fun as well. Yeah. Um, and the characters were all really fun as well, so that was all good. Oh, good. And, like the character I had was. Stag Satyr should have a huge thick neck to hold up those antlers. He should be buff as hell. Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was I saying? Da, da, da. Yeah, the dwarf character I did make had a very good name, I thought. It was mm-hmm. uh, uh, Sidian Dawnstone. <gasps> mm. But just Sidian. Sid for short. Yeah. And I just loved it. I was like, yep, I'm obsessed. I think he was he was a forged cleric, but I never really got to play into that that much. Because mm, you did you play what level were you playing at? I think we were like level three. Yeah, like you would have gotten like your channel divinity of like I can wear heavy armor. Ta da! Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> thoughts on just like this giant buff daddy satyr oh with like God. nipping. You've said it. I said it. You said you said the horny word. <laughs> the horny. We're going full horn on this. Mm-hmm. So, oh my god! I just looked up and I thought he had like piercing <laughs> weapon nipples. I mean, you could just have like nipple guns, like. <laughs> or not. Choking. <laughs> or not. You've seen Madonna with her cone bra. Now <laughs> <laughs> get ready for Daddy Sater. Oh my god. It's like that meme. I, I don't I don't know where the original meme is, but it's like, oh, I've got bread. I've got a tube. I've got bread tube. And then they run away and they go, don't leave me behind. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. But it makes me think of like the pineapple pen thing. Yeah. Oh, well, that's different. But like, so, is that meme? You've got a pineapple. Everything? You've got like, a pen. Uh, you pineapple pen. Yeah. I hate that. I hate it so much. Um, so what I was going to say, I don't even know. I've lost it. I've lost the plot. So, like, I don't know how to draw animal legs, so I'm just like... Give him like, a big old yeah. skirt. Ooh. With, like, a long... Oh, kill. Long kill. And then kill. just, like... Two hooves. Oh. And on the kill, it's just, you know, embroidered <laughs> in it. I don't know how to draw legs. <laughs> Problem solving 101. I don't know how to do it. He's just like, you know the Highland Oats guy? Not personally. Okay, like not personally, but like the guy that's on the packaging for Highland Oats. I mean, give me a second. I'll grab the box. <laughs> Let me just, hold on. Highland Oats. It's just this guy like, throwing, there we go. It's just going to be this guy. But like a fucking satyr. Yup. Yup. That's it. That's the tweet. He's just shot putting it. <laughs> oh god. What have I done? This oh, stream like, sponsored oh, by Where's their Scott's oh, Highland Oats. Oats. Two Anatomic books, and I'm like, where do, like what's what happens with like the groin? Like where's what's going on there? <laughs> like a lot of like Shaggy hair. And they're probably the best. I was going to say, like, is he... Do they need clothes? I don't know. Clothes? This is the question. Do they need clothes? No. Do they want clothes? Well, you know, depends on how... When in Scotland, Rome. (gasps) Sorry, I just realised that's how Satis would have gotten there. Like, they would have come over here, or come over to Scotland, and then they would have naturalised, and then gotten antler, dear antler horns. Yes. Because when the Roman Legion were, like, all up in this business, saying, hey, we want to have your land, we're going to build a wall. How does he, how do, you know, God, what have I done? (laughs) What have I created? Right. Okay. Oh, the reason why I did this, I, you know, when you get halfway through a drawing and you like, you like, make a bunch of notes, like, ah, oh, blah, 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 and then you 
leave something half done and then you come back later and you're like, oh, I meant to do this. <laughs> Deer have the ability to extend and withdraw their... Oh, wow, okay. They what? Deer have the ability to extend and withdraw their... Oh! Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's a different kind of horn. I was going to say, I thought you meant like the antlers. And I was like, where do they go? It's a different... Jesus. We've upgraded. We've gone from... We're at PG-13, honeys. Yep. I'd be like, Thank you for sharing that fact. All this knowledge. Yep. That's how I feel. Oh my god, everyone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, you know what? I'm glad that I now know more about the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh. However. There I feel is... like... Oh god, at least this isn't Beast Fables. That would be... How would I put that into an encounter of Beast Fables? <laughs> Oh my god. Well, it's also like 50 times larger than the size of your like players. So... Like, it could be a disaster. No! No! I'm cool with it. It's straight up. No thanks. Oh my god, could you imagine getting clubbed to death by a penis? I don't get... I don't make the rules, okay? You, <laughs> I think you do. So, you know, if you want to include a giant deer... No. No, no. I don't. I don't. I think we actually, like, off-stream... We had like a discussion about what do we want out of this game, and we all agreed no sex. No, 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 no. Like no, no. babies and children exist that are just pop out of the ground. We all know how it happens, but no, yeah, like they're like you know how uh, Ver had done that drawing of like the mm -hmm. little um... wait was it Ver drawing or was it uh, Atlanta's drawing of like the frog with the little flower on his head? Mm. Oh yeah, that was Ver. Yeah, disgustingly good, wasn't it? It was so cute, but like oh my that, God. wizard but, frog. But that's that's how they're birthed. Like they kind of they grow out of the flower, and the flower just like oh my God. leans over, and then out, it just pops. And there goes. So we did actually come up with um, uh, some good lore for frogs. Um, so mm -hmm. they live in this. It was really interesting. It's this is how we decided that we were like, let's not do sex, but we yes. can do things surrounding it, but not sex itself, because we had um, essentially toads are an, a completely ace species. Mm -hmm. So basically, because they, they lay out lots of eggs, uh, the way that toads have evolved as a society is they have, like, the birthing log, where um, they all come together, all of the 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 egg-laying toads lay their eggs, and then all of the other toads fertilize them, and then they just pick up a random glob of eggs and just go home. And it's sort of like this, in society, they all consider each other either uncles and aunts, cousins, or nieces and nephews, depending on, you know, varying ages. Um, and it's this idea of like, we're all related, we're all going to help each other out. There's no like lineage in a sense of like, we are the yeah. family of the da da da. Yeah, that's really nice. I really like that actually. Mm. So um, that's what's been really nice about that because it's very much informed how the rest of their societies worked. Because um, mm -hmm. we know the sort of objective fact everyone sort of could be related, though they're not normally, like they're not really. It's not like incest. Yeah. But like they yeah. could be, it's all like rate like a uh, takes a village as a vibe, but yes. um, they're also very Arthurian. Like they're all very knightly and speak with very posh English accents, <laughs> um, which is great fun. And it means that they have all of these knightly virtues without any of like the knightly houses drama, um, yeah. which is it's just a really interesting way of doing character storytelling. Um, Jenny's asking me to pick a favorite room from the descriptions and i actually have a question for ronnie not related to uh, joe this just question is this hammock does it have a pillow in it filled with stuffed animals and dolls manufacturing defects overstuffed missing limbs too many limbs so huh i don't know if i can fit that many limbs in a hammock but i'll try <laughs> wow um Jackal, up on the bed, please. I will put... Okay, so, rooms... I haven't read too many of the descriptions of the rooms, because I've gone through and I'm working off of the uh, the floor plan that you've given me, and then I'm going to go through each... So, basically, I'm laying out the, the rough dimensions of each room. So, like, this is a double bed. I'm like, cool, double bed. Um, I'm putting in, like, the rough patches of the space, and then I will go through room by room and read the descriptions and see what details I can fit in reasonably um, without getting too cluttered or confusing. Yeah, because it's quite a tight space. Like, there's quite a yeah. lot of air. 
Because, like, just I mean, it's to some degree it's tight space, but also like some detail or level of detail detail will just not be recognizable. So, if it's like not visible, then I won't well. do it. Um, because this is this is a fitting onto an inch grid, so in theory it could work as like a Dungeons and Dragons battle map. That's true. Yep. That's not how it much look, but yeah. So yeah. Um, however, of the different rooms, um, I love a tower. So by default, like my adoration goes to the. There's like a so there's a first floor. Mm -hmm. um, hang on, I'll just turn all, oh, all the drafts off. Um, so there's like a first floor, which is like a few rooms and a bathroom, and there's like a stairway up to a tower, and then there's a, a second floor, which is just a tower. And legit, mm -hmm. I'm I'm ready for it. Like That's jam. towers like are my favorite of all locations. It is quite on brand. Like if I could live in a tower, I would. <laughs> and I know the space is more inefficient, but there should be like tower blocks, as in like actual circular towers, and then each person lives on a separate floor in the tower. And look, Edinburgh, just make my fantasy wizard dream come to life. Absolutely. Here, of Daddy Sater in the corner there. Oh my god, Daddy Sater. It's like, you know that uh, Eurovision song? It's like Daddy Freer, but it like looks like it's Daddy Freer. The Daddy Freer. Oh, you're killing me. Is I uh, think about things. It's <gasps> oh oh yeah no I was gonna say like I don't remember a song called Daddy Fair but uh no think about things that yeah the guy who did that yeah like wow such a bop it's such a bop but like his name and the rest of the music the re oh, I was gonna say like the rest of the music that he's done before and after is also really good yeah it's also really good um but yeah like trying to figure out what that like D with the score through it is oh it's um it's a yeah, I think there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of strange pronunciation. Uh, I have a friend who's Norwegian, uh, Ida, who is an artist, and so we, we do the talking occasionally. And when Ida accidentally texts me in Norwegian, I'm just like, okay, those are some letters, and I will never know how they sound. No, yeah, because it's like it's like I think it's like a an S and an a together, like das the. Uh, like the D looks like that or like something. Yeah, it was a little cross. Hang on, I'm just gonna look up "Daddy like, Furry." That'll work. Like, like uh, that. Eurovision 2020 ice Iceland. Yeah. Then the capital letter is like that. Is that capital? D yeah, that was it. So I'm just gonna like. But it looks like like Daddy Freer. But. Mm. Which is weird because Freya is in the story. A girl. Is he? Are they? Wait, I might be thinking of someone else. No, it's Frigg. Frigg, yes. Frigg, who is the. Because they're well, twins. They're, Freya is the tw in... Freya's the boy and Frigg is the girl? Or is it the other one? Oh, I can't remember. Frey and Freya. Oh, yeah. Frigg is someone else, I think. I think Frigg might be their. Mother? I don't know. I don't really know Norse mythology too well. Okay, I'm just googling up what this letter is. I looked it up and I'm sure it's like a th. It's th. th it says th. Sorry? It says, uh, I'm looking at it as the sound. Th. Eth th. is the rune. Used in Old English, Middle English, Icelandic, Faroese, or it's called ed. Interesting. Ah, it's the th sound, as in this. Yeah, th. So it's deddy. Yeah, death, death. No, Dethi. Dethi. Death, Dethi. Dethi Freya. Oh, Dethi. Now all I'm thinking of is uh, in sexual sex education yeah. on Netflix. Dethi Pig. Dethi Pig. Dethi pig. Wash your hands, you Dethi Pig. <laughs> oh, such, good. such a good show. Done so, so well. Yeah, I haven't watched all of it, but I've watched a fair chunk of it. Hmm. So I'm putting in oh. stairs, and I know how to do stairs, but I'm still messing it up. Mm. I don't think that this even called for stairs in the original, but I'm putting them in. A teleporting cube. 
No, it's just like three or four steps to the front door. Just because oh. I thought it'd look yeah. cute. That's fair. I thought you were going like up the tower, and I was like, well, magic. Your arch nemesis, the curling stairs. <laughs> oh well, once I figured out how to do the curling stairs, it's actually super easy. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So Nerine says Frey and Freya. Ah, nice. Okay. There we go. So it is the, and that's probably why, because um, I know that a lot of the Icelandic, uh, Norwegian last names have male and female alternate alternating. Yeah. So like it's um, like Brian's son or Brian Dottir. Yes. So son of Brian, daughter of Brian. Uh yes, yes, yes. So the name will actually change depending that's on the child, which is probably not great for record keeping. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a an issue. Um, right, who else, who else? Who else do we need in here? Rand. Oh, that should be really interesting. Oh, I have to file that away as I want to look this up later. But I wonder, really specific inquiry, how changing documentation to fit like your that. gender would work. I was just thinking. That, so if you that, have, like, if you had like gender confirmatory surgery and you went through the whole process. Because I know in Scotland, it's a huge issue with a lot of my trans mask friends where um, mm. you can change your paperwork once. So yeah. You can change the, the, the gender that's on your like birth certificate or something once. You can't change back. Um, you have to go through like two years of all this drama to get that to happen. There was meant to be yeah. recently a repeal of the law that says that and yeah. making it more accessible, but it ultimately got voted down. Like, yeah, a whole load of stuff. Yeah, it's been a hot topic. Mm. In recent. UK Court of Laws. As a uh, shout, Fraser. Emmy, this is Jay Lester saying this, but Emmy says that um, she loves how smoothly you draw and she loves the shape of your art. So, oh. same. Oh. Same, Thank Emmy. You. I do. I, I love. Like, it's just got, you've got a, re a lot of really good flow. And it's oh. improving as well. Like, if you look two years back, your characters have come. A you've got a lot of strength in the way that you do your characters. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. Like, I think I found an old piece of art from a good while ago and I was like, oh my god. Like it really was just like once in a blue moon you drew the right shape and I was like, okay, this can this can work as a good yeah. character. Like you spent but five hours like blah, 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 blah. you're like, oh, snip that out, yeah. copy layer, delete layer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um but thank you. That's 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 very kind of you. I really that's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> um Yeah, I'm just trying to think now. I'm like thinking of other characters or like Rolls or mm. just something. Well, zoom out and walk us through who you got. Yes. So, I mean, swords depending for this first one here. Mm. Uh, Number Mushroom Forager. Uh, with a little basket. Is it a magic floating basket? I mean, it could be. Definitely could be. I just like like the pose of her with like the, mm. the hand behind her back. Yeah. Um, sword depending, unsure about the sword. Uh, a little like sheep herding tiefling, mm -hmm. or like, ram herding tiefling. Uh, kind of angry little man here. He's fun. I really like him. He was like one of the first few. Uh, the mullet arc may not make the cut, but we'll see. Mm. Obviously, our barbarian and old silky grandmother, who we love dearly. That's another thing. You don't ever see older selkies they're always like young beautiful women who've been captured from the sea so yeah, yeah i say she's still pretty magnificent you know like she's, oh, she's still she's... magnificent but it's nice to see older characters yeah for sure uh it's cranky old lock taxi man uh <laughs> guy i love him this fancy boy is he holding a dagger does he have a tray of drinks behind him you'll never know <laughs> is it uh, a tray of daggers <laughs> <laughs> a tray of daggers uh, Jay Lister says on a less wholesome note can you also do a big muscular lady satyr that was a suggestion I was going to come back with when you went through everything is could you double up characters and do alternatives so take a concept and do another one so there's two mushroom foragers there's two shepherds that's very true yeah mm. I think so I think so oh it could turn the kind of selkie on its head as well milky like mm -hmm. kelpie centaur what See, we did discuss the Kelpie Centaur before. However, lovely, Brian... lovely looking over shoulder backwards pose was going to be a Kelpore 
so a Kelpie okay. centaur. But unfortunately, you said, ew, horse legs. And yeah, you can't right. do like a massive horse sized kill. <laughs> Wait, what? Because that's what, what the solution we were going to do for the, the, the muscular. Uh, it. Yeah. Because it was originally just going to be like a massive. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, horse barding does look like that. Barding does look like that. So imagine. Do this, it. This- I don't know how they're like group sport. Oh my god, yeah. but that could be look really cool though, because imagine if it was covered in all like natural native Scottish like uh, kelp, literally a kelpie. So uh, the kelp's drooping down, and you cover all of that nasty horse business. I feel like kelp kind and of mud, like... and it's all dripping. Yup, yup, yup. I love it, but also please keep that character just as a regular person. Yeah, I'll copy it, and we'll see what happens. You know. Mm-hmm. It's a possibility for later. Mm. Highland <laughs> Cow before. Minotaur. I, I'm kind of into it. Yeah, Femme Minotaur realness. This is the thing. A lot of, like, Scottish folklore creatures are, like, combinations of, like, animals with, like... I mean, I'd, I'd say, like, a Highland Cow is pretty good. Mm. Like, a lot of times it's horses. I'm like, I can't be fucking drawing horses. <laughs> Maybe there was just them. one bard out there who could draw horses really well, and that's why we have so many horse creatures. They're just like, hmm, got my niche. I think it must have been. There was one damn bard somewhere, for sure. What was the fucking bards? Damn bards. Damn bards. I've never played a bard, actually, but I feel like... I feel like it would suit. Uh, oh, I never actually answered your question of like what character would I continue to play. Oh, yeah, please do. Played well. Actually, I don't know. I've played quite. I, every time I try and change it up and I try and do something different, because it's always like a class or a race that I've never really played. Mm. So I've done. Uh, uh, oh, what were they called again? What was the race? Janassi Rogue mm. played the. That's that one dwarven cleric. Very very briefly for like one session. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played a fancy French accented half elf rogue as well. <laughs> I love it. That's the class. Fancy French. Fancy French. Oh, actually, no. He was no, no, no. What was his character again? He was he was a villain that my friend maybe guessed in to kill all the characters. Mm. That was fun. Oh my god. Uh, it was like in a weird like wizards labyrinth or something, so they didn't actually die. But one of the players like burst in like was crying because I killed the character and I'm like, I'm sorry, I've been made to do this. Oh, mm, that's, hmm. Like it was, it was, it wasn't like, it was just like, oh, what? You killed my character, what? That is big mm, energy. I feel like you need to mentally prepare your, like crying is okay. Crying is great in role play because it really means you're invested, but also you've got to be ready to impact oh. people with that, those yeah, feelings. Prepare the threat. Um. But I think, to be fair, like, all the characters were very ballsy and just doing very stupid stuff, so it's kind of like... Oh, yeah. There's also, like, that side of things where, like, what else did you expect? You stepped on the trap. Like, traps are meant to kill you. Oh, you think consequences are not a thing? Mm. Um, what else, who else have I played? Uh, uh, what are the kind of, like, cow people again? Like... Cow people? You mean, um, furbolgs? Furbolg, that's it. They aren't yep. cow people, but yeah. yeah like cow, cow features, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I played, I did play like a Highland cow esque furbolg. Oh my god, he was like a monk, a hermit monk. That was fun. Ooh, speaking of minis, there's um a uh, furbolg monk uh, in because uh, I got uh, JP on Instagram to do uh, twelve character minis. Mm-hmm. So there's one for each character class. Um, okay. and they're all, oh, sorry, a little bit of beer. Mm. They're all counter, uh, trope. So the idea is you've got like a strength focused rogue, strength focused yeah. monk. You've got a, uh, like dexterity focused paladin, so on and so forth. So they're all against like the conventions of what a typical class would be. So that way it's showing so that players can pick these up, like pick people who are entirely new to role play can pick up these characters and go, Oh, this concept's cool. This is interesting. I'll I'll see what I can do. Um, And uh, what was 
What was I saying? So yeah, I have a furbog monk who um, is strength focused and is a monk because they like the practice and the routine. Um, oh. And like they do like a lot of mindfulness and meditation stuff. Mm -hmm. That's fun. I like that. Mm. Trying to like sketch out the uh, female satyr, buff female satyr. Mm. Ooh, and you're doing the big curly hair like I. Uh, but I'm trying to make sure it's not too like Amy Winehouse um, beehive. I mean, Amy Winehouse is also. Not a centaur, but <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Amy Winehouse, the centaur. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I, I think I've played like quite a lot of different characters, but my favorites are like definitely like Tiefling and half elves are just like or elves mm. are quite good. That's okay. So this is so this is part of the again nothing against Tieflings or people with horns, but I just I don't understand the appeal of Tieflings. That's a personal yeah. thing. So like, what is what about a tiefling makes you go like, yeah? I don't know. I just think they have like, for me, it's like there's so much custom customizable, mm. like in the how their appearance and like how they can act and things. I think mm -hmm. like I quite like the also their like lineage of some at some point has been messed with, and hence they are a tiefling. Mm. Um. But like, obviously it obviously doesn't mean that they are like inherently bad by any means. Yeah. It just, like a summer down the line, one of the family's members like did some nasty. See, this is the thing. Like, I feel like Wizards of the Coast is so broad and generic with its its world building now because it's kind of doing the Forgotten Realms a standard, but it's kind of not. So like, I don't understand why clerics aren't warlocks, why warlocks aren't clerics, why tieflings aren't also sorcerers. Like, like a bunch of different crossovers that... Because like, ah, oh, at some point your bloodline was messed with. Well, if it's the bloodline, surely you have a lot of inherent power then. I know you get like yeah. a free cantrip, but like, equally, working on your on the talents of your bloodline shouldn't detract from the fact that you're focusing on fighting with a sword or something. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. How do I make like buff satyr legs? This is just oh my god! Just just like goat big. Actually, wait, no, that's a good idea. Look up rams and look up um like oh, right, the male right. versions of creatures because they obviously put on more muscle mass and are like using them to fight for things. You know, the what, right? what like right? the the male uh, versions of creatures. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like I mean, typically like the men are. Uh, fighting to impress females and stuff like that. So yes. if like if you want to go for like more muscular, then I would look up that vibe. Yeah, definitely. Also, we're not like near the end of the stream. At least I'm gonna keep drawing. I don't know about you, but uh, people fine. don't forget to subscribe and to like and stuff because that's very important. Yes, please do. Oh yes, I like her. Like, she's got this <laughs> edgy underline, uh, under eyeliner. Ooh. Then... It's not eyeliner. It's edgy liner. Edgy liner. <laughs> so Jay Lister says, love to use tieflings as an analogy for LGBT people because they often face the same challenge of acceptance from their family and community. Fair. Oh, nice. Very fair. Yeah, I, like I wonder how parents react when you have like a teeth from child. When do the horns grow in? Oh yeah. When do they like change color? I feel like a good like analogy there is like maybe the parents because I know that like for example like with my mum because I'm gay big surprise. Um, my mum mm -hmm. said that she knew from the age of like four or five. She was like that kid's gay. Uh -huh. Um, and I mean fair. Pretty much like looking back at, I I would listen. I had to listen to ABBA every single night, or I couldn't go to sleep. 
Dancing Queen. Like, Abba Gold, put the CD in, turn it on. Otherwise, I had night terrors. So, like, the signs were there. <laughs> That's, like, the best, like, mm. character background. <laughs> I love that. Like, what's the one, like, quirky thing about your character? Has to listen to Abba Gold every single night. Else. Yeah. Or else. <laughs> or else. So, like, I think it'd be really interesting if you had, like, a character where, like, the tiefling was coming out but they didn't realise because it was just natural for them and other people could see it and, you know, that would be an interesting dynamic to explore. Also, um, it's also it's a different analogy or, like, a different experience, but, like, having them come out red-skinned, horns for the gods, straight out with the, the afterbirth and people going, uh-oh, what do we do now? Like, yeah. I also think that's a, as the kids say, a mood. <laughs> a mood. So, um, Lister again. An autistic person, I also like... Oh, as an autistic person, I also like tieflings as an analogy for being an autistic person. Growing up with nobody else like you around you, being surprised your parents. Um, if you're following the horns, how work in animals, they're born without horns with bald spots. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Well, you know. I feel like, again, like because ultimately, we're just making stories up. It can be whatever you want. Yeah. So exactly. it can be really cool. Yeah, I really like the custom customizability of, like, how do the horns look? And, like, just purely from, like, an aesthetics point of view, but also, yeah, like, the mm. story side of it is also very good. Mm. Also, like, if T-Things have big horns, they should have a horn attack. Straight up. It right. should be, like, you've got ram horns, you got a bash. you got, like, the, the speaky spacky horns, you got a stab. Like, horns have a function. Yeah, I solid agree. Mm. I feel like, it, I mean, mechanically, probably, it would just be, like, an unarmed strike for flavor. Mm-hmm. Well, it would be like, um, you, like well, no, no, it, it's a weapon, because uh, unarmed strikes you're proficient with. All people are proficient with unarmed strikes. Um, but they only do one point of damage. The The bonus of being a tiefling is you get, like, 1d4 bludgeoning, which is more significant than just, like, eh. Yeah, that's true. Right. The real question is, are they finesse? Because then, if so, you can get a sneak attack with your horns. Ooh. Imagine going to, like, backstab someone. It's supposed to be like, ah, uh, you go, like, and you just, like, full-on impale them and just lift them up like a rhinoceros. God. No, a rhinoceros. Very good one. You know what? She's going to get some, like... I'm just drawing the same chair over and over again with like oh. with Quebec because it's a stand-in oh. chair. It's it's. Yeah, I'll do another chair later. Be be nicer. Be nice chair. So I think that was a vanity. I think. Hang on. Let me go to the layout. This is yeah, for Jun's room or June. Just to reference. So he has messy papers, pile on the bed, single bed, instruments, bunch of instruments. Also, applause to you guys who are listening, who put this document together. Like, yeah, like you might not have been uh, here earlier, but like, twenty-seven pages full of references, lots of descriptive text, existing fan art. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I will be putting in Janthony the Basilisk pup's sweater. That's like highlighted. <laughs> Wait, Basilisk pup? Excuse me. Yep. They have a baby basilisk. I want to be in this campaign. Oh, yeah. Can I join? Can I, Can we be like guest characters? Yeah. Can we come in and just be like, oh my god, a basilisk baby? And then we get time to stone or something. Yeah. Kill the baby and run. Like, that's all yeah. we really want. <laughs> Running away. <laughs> mm. um, so uh, Lister says, I love horn aesthetic, but also hang off of being a Homestuck fan. Horn caps, horn engravings, horn piercings, chains stuck between the horns. Yes. Um, that's fair. Yeah, horn horn decor is mm -hmm. definitely, uh, horn definitely a horn de jour. Horn de jour. Um. Also, side note, Homestuck. I've tried. I just I, don't know how to. I I physically don't know how to access and read it. Like, I have no idea. I like, keep getting to like a weird Flash comic game, but I'm not clicking the right buttons. And then apparently there's like a bajillion thing. And yes, tell us the story about the basilisk. Yeah, please. I want, like, like, any game with a basilisk baby. Oh, that's going to be a Beast Fables encounter. Basilisk baby. Basilisk baby. Baba basilisk. 
Get ready to get hard. Stone hard. God. Oh, God. Hey, you're the one who did a daddy satyr. Like, you took it. (laughs) Okay. The arms are definitely not quite right, but proportions are a bit off, but I can fix that later. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I want that arm behind the back as well, or no, that's going to be like a forward. I don't know how to draw. Honestly, 80% of the arms that I draw, depending on just how the lines overlap, I'm like, yep, that's just how it's going to be for the pose. Like, it's not intentional any of the time. Like, it's not intentionally poised at all. I guess that goes there. Maybe a bicep there. I don't really know how arms work. Learn anatomy, kids. <laughs> it never did. Me neither. Make it look somewhat convincing, but a little bit janky at the same time. Mm-hmm. Also, for people watching, yes, or for the people who commission this, yes, I have remembered to put in a bajillion toothbrushes for the sink. They have a bathroom, and it specifically says in the notes, Toothbrushes everywhere, so. <laughs> could you imagine a hedgehog, but they've just got toothbrushes? Oh, <gasps> you could do hedgehogs. He's, little, he's a little scrubby. Well, actually, okay, so, tiny side note. I have this document for Beast Fables. Can I, like, guess in it? Can I be the, can I be the hedgehog? Um, if you want to guess at some point... I mean, perhaps. It's got to make story. It's got to make sense with the story, but like, sure. I don't know. Twenty episodes. We'll see. How, we'll see how long this goes because we don't have an. We don't have like a. We're doing twelve episodes and then we're done. We're just. It's yeah. just me and Vera in Atlanta playing, having fun and vibing, and you know, just having a good time. Right. Orphans are definitely off on this. I think the head is way too big. I thought you said the orphans are definitely off. I was like, uh oh. No. <laughs> Poor orphans. Oh no, orphans. This is too thick. <laughs> okay, so um, story of the basilisk. Oh yeah. Um, so Janthony the basilisk was found as an egg in a temple full of fanatic cultists who were trying to raise them as an offering to their god. Um. Wait, what's his name? Janthony. Oh, I like, like Anthony name. and Jan. Um. Nalan, one of the characters, is sensitive about this because he was also born in a cult. They rescued the egg and then learned enough about Basilisk not to feed it what it required to grow up to become deadly. So he'll be a puppy forever. He wears two eye patches so he doesn't stun anyone. They've recently invested in an anti-magic collar for so he can't petrify people. Last the orc does not like him, wanted to put his eyes out. The eye patches were a compromise. The Basilisk is so dense. Okay, question. Physically dense? Or like intelligence dense. I would love it if they're like, oh, he's a baby, and he's like 50 kilograms. Oh. Like, he walks on, like, a creaky floorboard, just... I was going the opposite way. Like, he's actually very well educated. Yeah, he's a very very erudite, but he's also very dense. (laughs) Um, He wears a sweater that was knitted for Ronnie as a gift, but it was too small for her. So instead they put it on the basilisk, which is why, oh, I can see it. There are like uh, holes punched through where he's got like extra arms. As in like, it's a a human, it's like a baby jumper, but then because the basilisk has got six limbs, the other four are like poking out. You can't see it. Basilisk have limbs? You're, yeah. Hold up. Hold the fuck up. Okay, so basilisks can mean a lot. You're thinking of, like, Harry Potter, where they're just, like, snakes that stun people. But basilisks can also be, like, more like lizards. Oh, oh my god! I love it! Oh, I want one! That's so much cooler than I was expecting. <laughs> Thank oh you. My- Thank you, chat. You have introduced basilisks to Fraser's life. Wow, both physically and intellectually. Both stupid and extremely heavy. That's that's fair. Okay. Apparently the basilisk is, basilisk is both stupid and extremely heavy. Aww. Yeah. I mean, it's because you're not feeding him. 
Yeah, the fact that you're starving him is a little lame. I don't think they're starving him, I just don't think they're giving him the diet to grow up, which is different. Sort oh, of right. like if you keep an axolotl Amazon. in water, it, or yeah, if you keep an axolotl in water, it will just never go past its baby cute stage. Oh, okay. Because the whole point wait, is wait. that it goes onto land, it starts to dry out, and that activates teenage mode. Wait, what do axolotls turn into then? Well, they turn into axol. They're like still axolotls, but they have like a non-amphibious mode. Well, oh they God. turn from being water-based, like entirely water-breathing creatures, into amphibious, where they can be in water but they yeah. can't breathe water. Yeah, I just looked up axolotl dry. Because <laughs> I was like, well, it's not going to be wet, is it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's got, what I, it's got what I'm looking for. Yeah, they're a bit cuter when they're in the water. They're more like yeah, cute. that's like their, their tadpole stage. But if you keep them in water, then they just they just get bigger. Like, there's a, there's an axolotl at... Um... Oh, where is it? Uh, Black Medicine in Edinburgh. Um, in, a, in a fish tank. Um, it's very, very slow. I, I think it's like the owners. like the, It's cared for and it's fed and stuff like that. I think the tank's a little too small, but it seems pretty yeah. chill. That's fair. They have signs up like, please don't tap the glass. I'm old. <laughs> okay, they're saying uh, basilisks need to eat people in order to grow larger. Did not oh, know that. yeah, so maybe that's... maybe avoid the, pe- the I can say pizza eating, people eating. Um, then, all these kids feed him things they don't want to under the table. Okay, oh, that's also, cute. the characters in this, in this uh, cottage slash campaign, they have kids. Like, they have little babbies. It's oh, like a God. whole family. That's so cute. So what, do the parents go out like on adventures? And do they just leave the I assume to, like, so. Or like maybe they've got like NPCs that are like partners that stay home and, you know, oh, do babysitting. That's really nice. It reminds me of uh, a game series called Children of Mortar. It's sort of like this Diablo-esque uh, fighter shooter game. But everyone in the, all of the playable characters are just all family members. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is really cute. And so you have, like, at one point, like, this little eight-year-old girl manifests fire magic and starts just throwing fireballs. And everyone's like, look, we don't want you to go on adventures because it's dangerous. And she's like, fire! And she starts... There's, like, an enemy attack on the house and just burns them to the ground. And they're like, oh, okay. okay. Hmm. Come with it. You, uh... You need help. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Also, thank you, the giant sitter woman loves you too. She adores you also. Mm-hmm. Tully commits adoption often. I love that you commit adoption. Commit. Halt! You are under arrest. You have broken the law. You have committed adoption. <laughs> and, uh, you have robbed these children of a valid backstory. <laughs> oh, wow. <sighs> yeah, I say it's a pretty cute backstory. Like, I grew up with a baby bass, like a bassless pup. Like, mm-hmm. how many characters can say that, you know? <laughs> Uh, right. I'm all of this like basilisk baby. Like, I didn't realize it had legs. That makes it so much cuter. So, hang on, it's upside down. Um, I've done the first floor, and I'm now at the stage where um, I could commit to doing more permanent line work, or I could just fuck it off and do the first floor. Mm. So you can guess what Which I'm gonna hard. do. <laughs> That's fair. I absolutely. Procrastinate doing final line work. Oh, same as. Like, I will do draft and then draft two and then draft three. But the minute you're like, oh, could you do some final line work? Sorry. I don't think so. How do I how do I hide all the boobies? All the titties of the Hide the boobies? No, just have them out. My I'm thinking I might do like a kind of crossed over like tartan. It's it's Taps off, not tats off. Oh my god. Look. You started it. I mean, you know what? You're right. I check that. Mm, yeah, I, I'm into that. You know, that across the chest kind of thing. I feel like you would have, like, bracers on. We love a bracer. Bracer, I hardly know her. <laughs> Though to be fair, like if she honestly, has big breasts, then she would be binding them because she's going out and punching dudes. 
This is true. This is um, if she had taps off, then she would have smaller breasts because no one wants to get like a big, weighty, meaty thing swinging out loose. Yeah, it's painful. You put you off balance. Like I've got maybe like small fat boobs, and it hurts if I'd like run up the stairs too quickly. So. Well, there we go. Yeah, that that kind of works. I mean, yeah, this works. This works. Mm. Got something going. Also, kind of looks quite cool, but like the proportions are a little bit off. But that's fine. Uh, the latest is a cursed baby who can scream unnaturally loud. There's not much sleep in the cottage. The entire it's been an entire event that they're all exhausted before the cursed child starts sleeping through the night. High part across the roof. It sounds like kind of a whole time, and I'm into it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's there's been thought and commitment here. Oh, absolutely. Which I respect hugely. I'm very excited for my dinner tonight. What are you having for dinner? I made uh, sweet potato and butternut squash uh, risotto with some, like, roasted squash seeds. Mmm. Uh, like... What is happening with these these lines? How oh. dare you be confused? I didn't know if I ran out of risotto rice as I was making it, so half of it, it's like half risotto rice and half just like brown rice. So I'm just hoping it. Because <laughs> I was like, well, I started it now, and I had like a whole squash like roasting in the oven, mm. and it just I was like, oh, absolutely I'm roasting, absolutely pure roasting, and I've like committed to it now. Mm -hmm. So just. Nothing can make me change my mind. I'm sure we've all been there. Get halfway through roasting a squash. You know what? I prefer her to the buff, say her daddy, because it just works better. And also, he looks a bit too much like the mullet orc. So you kind of Actually, I love that. I prefer her to the daddy satyr. It just works. It just works. It just works better. Gets the job done. Gets the job done. On. Really? Right, okay. I'm going to try and look up how to draw a horse because. Actually, I feel like that's a big vibe because technically there aren't any female satyr in the. If I understand it in the mythology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're. Like, they're, just, like there's female nymphs and there's male satyr. But I like the idea of there being female satyr and they're just really efficient because all the male satyr are too busy being horny. Well, yeah, they just get it done. They just get the yeah. job done. Yeah. Women are like, God, just calm down. <laughs> are just the bards of the world. Yeah. All these ancient ruins you're finding, the only reason they're standing is because female satyrs made them. Yes. Agreed. Right. Horses. Oh, why did it look so weird? I hate horses. Just, honestly, you don't have to draw it, just trace it. Yeah. Just stick that image in. I just, they're just so dumb looking. And like, sca like they're scary. They walk on like fingers. What horses? Oh, well, like, oh! I thought you were like they specifically were like, "Ooh, your toes!" Stop. <laughs> well, like, well, okay, not on like one person specifically. No, but like, yeah, they are. Yeah, I mean, like all animals finger. with hooves, like that joint is the finger. They are, yeah, or toenail. They're walking on their on their toenails. Yeah, which is gross, and they're like they're so big, like they could destroy you, and they're so muscly. They're just gonna freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> Really don't like them. <laughs> mm. I, I love it. Weird. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's just making me think of the because specifically the word destroy. I'm gonna say something and you're probably gonna hate it. Uh huh. Do you know who the cock destroyers are? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> We're right. the toe destroyers. Just <laughs> right, doing the stream. I'm leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Christian sanctity of the stream has been violated. Oh, We're the toe destroyer. It. <laughs> it's so gross when someone else does it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I had to go through it yesterday. Oh, God. Destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you, you just have to get the horse's proportions right, otherwise it just looks janky as hell. Mm. Um, Lister said, 
Maybe she's trans. I I don't know what that's referring to, but maybe. Sater? Mm. The Sater? Mm-hmm. One of the one of the characters um, from the the NPC pack for the Kickstarter, which I have not released yet because I've been very busy, um, is is trans, the ranger. Oh, that's fun. Good, 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 good stuff. Um, yeah, that was a really nice uh, console because uh, I had sensitivity readers come in for the characters because obviously I want to do them like right, and I am. Yeah, I was um, going to ask actually, how did the like non-binary um, writing? Bingo. So non-binary is a little bit easier. So first of all, um, Ver invented the idea of Jan Stan. So I described Jan to Ver very early okay. on in the rewrite project. Oh, that horse face is great. Thanks. Um, and Ver was just in love with Jan okay. as a character. And that's actually, Ver is actually why uh, Jan is now non-binary and not like the original book. Um, uh, male. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it was like something I wanted to do anyway. I had already had non-binary and trans characters for the NPCs in the original, um, but I just had Jan as like this messy, dirty, sort of like nineties um, shitty boyfriend vibes. Okay. Yeah. But instead, kind of talking to Jan uh, to to Ver and describing Jan, um, Ver was like, "Oh my god, he's this complete disaster," and he's. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my god. And then I was like, well, I mean, I was going to change the character anyway. You know, could you give me some advice about non-binary? And like, we talked about the character. I'm not saying that uh, Vera is at, at all responsible for the writing, because um, uh, I did that. But uh, I find non-binary is easier because it's just not like an absence. It's not like it's... How to, how to phrase it? Yeah, I, I mean, like I'm... it's like I mean, it, to be fair, it's how you'd write any character. It's not like men go around saying, "I'm a man, 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 man." Address it as much. Yeah, so it's to some degree with non-binary and with gender in that sense, it's much easier. The mm -hmm. reason why I really wanted to have sensitivity consult because they read through all of the characters, but they specifically consulted with um, uh, trans as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think there must be a delay in the stream because they've just said not the cock destroyers in chat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a but that's fine. Yeah. Cause that was like five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. That's old news. I'm just gonna check stream health. It says the stream status is excellent. So Okay. Yeah, I've not got a... Uh message about the cock destroyers yet mm. it's never something i thought i would be saying fair 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 um yeah so what was that what was i saying um uh, with the trans characters fair. trans characters um is i honestly had no idea how to fairly and equally represent trans as an experience without making it the focus of the character because you don't want to be like I'm a trans. Ba 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 ba. Ha ha ha. Because it's such a spectrum, even within itself, of like how people are understanding of their gender and how they're presenting it and all of yeah. that. Like a really common idea is because we've got the whole trans medicalist thing. Is that like you're not actually really trans unless you have dysphoria? Yeah. Right. Like you're not yeah. trans unless you really hate your body, and that's mm -hmm. not healthy. Like, no. especially now that the a lot of good work has been done in trans recognition there are people out there saying that they want to be trans but it's not that they hate being male they just feel better with something else or i say male like they feel better changing to fit a better idea but it's not like they detest who they are at birth yeah 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 again even now like i'm struggling with the words because i'm not like i'm an ally but like i'm not as educated yeah well like, i'm not a consultant on this i'm not going to say that i am so that's why i have the sensitivity readers um, yeah absolutely so yeah, it was we were talking specifically about how can you have a trans character because one of the schools of thought I was like, oh, crap, if you have a trans character, would you not just do them as like air quotes female? Like if you had like a, a trans woman, would they not just be a woman in every sense and you would never mention it because, you know, ugh, that's one of the yeah. questions I had. And um, like how do you bring it up without it being like insensitive or addressing? So some of the, the things they suggested were like have typically masculine features but have them as in all aspects a woman and don't bring it up like that's part of it is like take away the idea that a woman has to have a feminine face because yeah. there are women who are uh, 
assigned at birth women who yeah. just have quite masculine features that happens um yeah. i mean this yeah. described a lot in fantasy as having handsome features which it was meant to be a really like backhanded way of saying it yeah also i'm vibing for this horse by the way thank you it's actually like for the first time ever drawing a horse i'm okay with it like it's it's coming out good also braids i have no idea how to do braids and you're just like bah, 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 braid and... i just know you kind of just do like that pattern a lot mm. and then just like go around the edges mm. like more or less it's kind of yeah on the one hand yeah sure on the other hand can i kill you steal your skin and take all of your talent i mean you can try oh <laughs> but good luck bitch i love the confidence <laughs> you can fucking try me bitch mm -hmm. it's pretty bitch Right name, bitch, and I'm back. That's, looks like the voice that this horse would have. Oh my god. It's Brittany. Oh no, wait, oh, I can't do the zoom thing, dramatic zoom. It's Brittany, bitch. Oh my god. Get it. Oh, oh I'm too sweaty for it to work. Grim. That's a quote. I'm too sweaty. <laughs> That's what she said. Ah. <laughs> oh god, Brian. With a cock destroyers. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, Lord help me. Satan, oh. anybody, intervene. I still haven't got the message about the cock destroyers in the stream. Was it before that? Have I completely missed it's it? it? No, no, no. It's the, it's the most recent from at least what I'm seeing. Maybe my thing isn't refreshing, but it just says, Jay Lester, yeah. 1997, not the cock destroyers. No, With that's... a zero for the cock. Thank you for <laughs> avoiding the. The, yeah. the sensitivity filters. YouTube, Christian, virgin, pure. Oh, God. <laughs> pure destroyers. No, I hit it, I hit it, I hit it. I still not sure not for me. Where, what's going on here? So strange. The last message I have is J-Listers and relevance to them all traditionally being male. Maybe, maybe J-Lister deleted it. Maybe. Maybe. Because I got it in my thing. Or do I have to approve it? Oh. Oh my god, I could make Jay Lister a moderator. Oh. <laughs> or put them in timeout. No, I'm not going to do either of those. Don't worry. <laughs> but like, you could put people in timeout. That is... Okay. Being rowdy. Oh, she's got a septum ring. I forgot to put that on. The horse has a septum. Horse has a septum. I'm into it. But why would the horse have a septum unless it was like, because they're normally to pull from the nose. Maybe. Oh. It's Britney, bitch, and I'm into fucking Britney fetish bitch. play. You need me to justify my body to you? Mm -hmm. Come at me, horse daddy. How fucking dare you. <laughs> Beautiful, and I know it. The audacity. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Oh, I hate it so much. <laughs> Cancel me. Just, oh, no, just, just I, take me out. I changed one line now. It looks like it's grinning, and I hate it. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm hanging up. I do like. Oh my god, no, no! Horse with human teeth. Oh, that's that actually gives me the fear. I oh like my god, horse with fangs. Oh, juicy. No. Oh, I meant okay. like proper like chompy fangs as opposed to like vampire fangs. All right. <laughs> it still looks like the horse is smiling. It does and I hate it. Right, what do I need to get rid of? I think it's this line. It's that line. And it just has like lips. I think no, I think it's cursed. It's like once you see it, it'll never go away. <laughs> you know what makes it even worse? Just like a little smile. Hmm. The only thing we can do, the only thing we can do is just burn the whole iPad. No! <laughs> Start again. I drew a horse once. This can be my curse. <clears throat> just, you just feel like one thing wrong and the whole horse just doesn't look right.
bang, and the horse is wrong. <laughs> Oh god. Oh, wait, no. oh, I lost my horse reference. No! Oh, there he is. Right. What's going on with your weird ass face, horse? Okay. Um, mm, this is a question. Mm -hmm. What is this overhanging? Oh, they're okay, 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 okay. Oh, I know it's fine. The plumbing could work. No, I just realized I was, I was, you know, there's a bathroom, and I was like drawing a toilet, and I was like, hmm, this is, is this overhanging the kitchen? Does this actually have anywhere for the toilet to go? <laughs> oh dear. I hate horses. Mm. This is a question. Right. Fantasy toilets. Yes. Like, the what, what? Is there like a universe? I think honestly. Actually, thinking about it, I think they use like European squat toilets. They would. Yeah. It's the most accessible yeah. in terms of toilets for like different sizes and creatures and parts. Like it's just put it in the hole, flush. Yeah, think about a layer. Yeah. Or don't. Mm hmm Alternatively to that um theory, um Harry Potter universe. Pre toilets. Oh god, no, no. Do not do not bring that vile woman into my stream. <laughs> I'm not going to mention her by name. She who must not be named. She who must not be named. However, I think like blank shits are maybe my favorite. <laughs> like... It's like 500 pound, not 500, 50 pound shits. As in like, flu powder is expensive. But the, yeah. You don't just like use it on, on anything. It's like diamond dust. Like, you want to be like, oops, gotta go, sprinkle some diamond dust on your ass, and there you go. Or it's just the <laughs> idea of, like, 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 as if they're, like, rabbits. Like, it just drops out in little pebbles, and they go, eh, buh, 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 buh. Could you what? shortcut it and, like, not have to actually poop, but just put the... Put okay, the so speaking of shortcuts, different <laughs> universe, Avatar The Last Airbender, Waterbenders. Oh, God. Strong bottom energy. Oh, my God. Don't tell me you wouldn't. Dear God. If you could. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the question is, is that blood bending or water bending? Water oh, bending! Like, oh, not like that. Sorry. That, made that was. Better. Wow! Or Took like, it to a whole new level. Like, God, never mind. I take that back. Oh, wait, can't. It's live on the stream. Oh, God. Wait a minute, I'll just play some copyrighted music and then I'll be forced to mute it. Don't worry. <laughs> the horse looks gorgeous. Thank you. Love the septum ring on the horse. Okay, the septum ring is staying. It has congressional approval. I mean, like, it was always going to stay. I don't know what the purpose is, but apart from just looking badass, like, it's just nice. I have a question for Jay Lester. How fast do the rooms grow in this, in this cottage? Like, do you just wake up and find that you have, like, an extra... 10 feet in your bedroom. Well. Um, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could not. That was too good of an opportunity to miss. Mm -hmm. We're going um, to hell. Look, you started this. The stream is end now. Like, this is, we're getting into dangerous territory. <laughs> we've, crossed, we've crossed foreign waters. We're into <laughs> Hmm. Deep breath. Okay. Deep breath. Okay. Cleansing. Cleansing. Right. What? Can we just mini of the horse just like neck up? Because honestly, fuck the rest of it. Oh my god, what if it was just a, it was if it was like a horse neck and then it was just human feet? <laughs> no arms. Wait, let me draw the toes. <laughs> 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 Not even, not even like degenerate. Just straight up, like it goes into these massive gams and then down into like single knee, human. <laughs> this is fucking cursed. <laughs> okay, so the bedroom apparently appears fully formed. Okay, so the bedroom appears, but how fast does it appear? Because my question is, do you just like? 
do you walk into the house and it's like and then the room appears or is it like you turn you turn around you do like a double take and there's just like an extra door is it like the grim old place yeah okay. is it like a old place where like oh there's just a little bit more corridor where there wasn't before and now there's like your bedroom brian has created a monster <laughs> we've created a monster oh my god i love that it's got one horse leg one human leg <laughs> It's not meant to have a horse leg. Well, the, the sketch is there from when you did the horse leg. So I'm th- all I'm thinking when I see it is, like, the horse leg. Oh, no. As in, like, with the deg- degenerate double backwards bends. Oh, no. <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> How? Oh, no. No, that's meant to be, like, a calf, not another... Oh, no, but, God. like, there was more around it. Now that you've taken it off, it's looking like a calf, but it looked... Anyway. Oh, no. There we go. I. Oh, God, it's terrible. <laughs> It's a full come at me bro vibe. Oh my god, give it big beefy arms. Do wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh... <laughs> oh god. Uh... Which costume is this? Here we go. Oh my god, it's Bojack Horseman. No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> right, okay, guess what I'm doing. It shouldn't take you long, I hope. Is it not Bojack Horseman, but is it the... No. So it's not from that TV show at all? No. Oh, it's Brady, bitch. <laughs> way too fitting i love it i love it oh my god also uh lister says that the they do see the front door moving though and we move away from people it doesn't want to admit oh oh i love that that is so cool it just like yeets out of there Mm -hmm. that's cool um uh this also says that the house um only grows when no one's looking, so like when they're asleep and stuff like that, which is cool. I love the idea of like not knowing that someone was in the family and like you wake up and you're like, oh hey, there's a new bedroom. I guess you're here to stay. That's quite scary, actually. Oh my god, Brian. <laughs> wings. It's now, not wings. It's I, know, the... I, I know it's like the thing, but I can, all I can see now is like a little horse cape. <laughs> oh god. But then you zoom out and it's just like human feet. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay. Oh, did you screenshot it? <laughs> I'm not keeping that there. I, I need you to send me that screenshot that's going on social media. Like, oh, look at this latest mini for the DNA. Ah, nah, nah, nah. mm. So uh, or- Jenny has asked, uh, Brian, how do you feel about the incident recently with DMs Guild and Gay Men's Supplement being removed from the site for explicit material? Okay, so like I was vaguely hinting at like DMs Guild, the fall of D&D and how restrictive D&D can be. Um, right. So you don't know about this, Fraser? Well, I might. I don't know the wording. What's the DMs Guild and the Gay Men's uh, what, 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 Dungeon Master's Guild. It's the official, air quotes, official place to publish... Uh, fan content oh. that you can sell. So they take 50%, you get 50%. Okay. So have you heard about this? I don't think so, but please mm. enlighten me, I may. So, uh, we're going to take a two minute break for you to charge your pen. Oh, you saw it before I did. Sure, okay. Um, so, Dungeon Master's Guild. Um, the concept of the Dungeon Master's Guild is that um, essentially you can publish content there that uses Wizards of the Coast stuff Mm -hmm. um what are you writing oh god I'm trying to write with my pudgy fingers oh my god you're writing with your fingers I didn't know you could write with your fingers okay so um uh the, essentially, there is the the open gaming license, which is like a, a small set of rules that from D and D or that anyone can use in publications. 
Um, it's no named content um, and nothing that's uh, really cool and it's limited character options. Then there's the whole of the Wizards of the Coast license, which is uh, like expanded content, extra books and stuff like that. The DMs mm -hmm. Guild, the license there says that you can use any of that expanded content and also refer to books like the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide, which you can't do with the open gaming license. You just have to say D&D content. Right. Um, and you don't have to have any extensive large licenses at the back of the work. You just have a single sentence that says, this was published on the DMs Guild. That's part of the okay. thing. So anything on the DMs Guild is authorized by Wizards of the Coast. However, okay. you have very restrictive guidelines about what is allowed to go up. So it has to be like book content. I had some character card items up there and they actually took it down. Um, this was back when the DMs Guild very first went up as well. But, okay. uh there were character cards and they made the front page and they were like, uh, no, you can't have cards. And I was like, okay, well, fine. Okay. Um, and in exchange for this license, uh, they get a 50% cut of anything you make. No effort. And the uploader is really janky. The website as a whole is hard to navigate. It's very poorly made. And they get 50% of anything you write. Also, they have exclusive rights to include any content in Wizards of the Coast books. Mm. And you cannot publish that content anywhere else. Once it has been on the on the, the website, even if you take it down, they you automatically give them exclusive rights to have your content on the website, on okay. only on DMs Guild. So if I were to put uh, in uh, Dungeons on a Dime, any issue of it uh, on uh, the DMs Guild, not only would I not be able to publish that issue anywhere else, but I also couldn't publish Dungeons on a Dime stuff anywhere else. Right. So you're like own oh, everything. Okay. Yep. That seems it's annoying. disgusting. So before we even touch on the recent of many controversies, mm -hmm. uh, I am against the DMs Guild on every principle. Not against yeah. the people who work there. Not Conqueror. against the staff. Yeah. Not against, like, as far as I know. Like, mm -hmm. in theory, like, I say staff as a general term. The people who are working there are not bad people. Yeah. Um, and it's not their fault that these are the restrictions that Wizards of the Coast have put in place. But the DMs Guild, as a service is not fit for purpose. It is mm -hmm. harmful for the role-playing community in the sense of it hampers creativity, it hampers freedom, and it also exploits people who are new to this. Because yeah. they sign up, they think, oh, I'm official, I'm on DMs Guild, when really they have no services being provided to them other than a host for a PDF. Yeah. And Wizards of the Coast gets everything. Yeah, they like own everything that you make, okay? It's really, really rough. Yeah, same it. <clears throat> so already I'm against the DMs Guild. And that was like five years ago. Because I... Mm -hmm. oh, it came out in 2014. Because okay. I put stuff on it 2014, 2015. Back yeah. when I was very first playing the idea of writing like D&D &D role playing content. That yeah. was in second year of uni. Um, mm -hmm. And even from then, really, really against it. Because you don't only lose the rights to publish the work, you lose rights to all of the images, you lose rights to the content oh. itself as well. So you can take yeah. the text and put it in a new format. Like that text cannot go in any other book. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That's wild. Now they may have changed the licenses since then, but mm. every time I've had this conversation, someone's been like, oh, can you recommend something? And people are like, oh, try the DM skill. It's super easy. And I've been like, the licenses are really gross. And then response would be like, oh, it's not that bad. Then everyone goes and reads it and they go, oh, actually it's still really bad. I thought it was better now, but it's not. So yeah. blanket statement, DMs Guild, awful. But the most recent controversy, uh, a gay uh, cis writer worked with a bunch of illustrators, sort of like Dungeons and Dime like project, if that makes sense, uh, made a queer vampire fifth edition adventure uh, with some classes and spells and content. And a lot of the illustrations were like, they definitely weren't uh, sexual. They weren't explicit. Right. But they also were like, I mean, let's look at some examples. Let me get my screen up. Like they were, they were like PG thirteen. Okay. At that. Implicative. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me okay. go to social media thing. Now that you're talking about, it, I have no idea what this is about. So I'm like, oh, see multiple of my face. Oh, wait, where am I? Help me! Help me! Right. 
I just have to move some things. And then I go like these moving things around. Oh lord, what's happening? Earth. And I crop it. And then I go to display one. And you can see Google. Oh, it's Damn. gotten really big all of a sudden. Why? <laughs> Why? Okay. Bloop. Okay, so I'm gonna find. Okay, so now that's there. Um, I'm gonna find the artwork. I think it was like "Death by Badger" is the Twitter handle. Uh, sorry, my flatmate. Or yeah, my flatmate just messaged me saying, uh, "Get your face back into camera." Great content about talking about smoothies. It was also a while ago. I just hadn't seen the message. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, talking about smoothies. That was like when you disappeared off to get your. Oh, because there were frozen smoothies inside. Yeah. Yes. So the the the. Uh, illustrator's, not illustrator, the writer, I don't know if he's also an illustrator, but the writer's name is Oliver Clegg, and his Twitter okay. handle is Death by Badger. So he has some fantastic uh, threads discussing why the artwork is not essentially why this is censorship. Yeah. So all the props to Nick, or Oliver even, I don't know why, because I'm thinking Nick Clegg, Oliver Clegg, um, <laughs> for... This is a vibe. So this is, uh, the, the adventure was like a house full of gay vampires and it is mostly just like gay, queer, art and vampires and stuff like that. And it's referencing a lot. Like this kind of pose here on the left-hand mm -hmm. side of the front of cover of the book, that's Curse of Strahd. That's the Curse of Strahd holding something, hand out, glass of wine, but in like kinky leather gear. There's nothing yeah. explicit. There's nothing yeah. overtly sexual, as in like there's no sex happening. Yeah. But it got pulled down for being a violation of content. So this is the these are all existing images that are on the DM's guild as it is. Of course. So you have <laughs> Drow, who were always depicted as or like typically like the idea of like, oh, these are the black people from AD and D. So it's a whole yeah. race concept ish thing, problematic from the very beginning. But here she's literally got her fanny out and highlighted yeah. by fabric, and her I boobs know. out and all of this. And you've got like naked nerids with like leaves coming out of their vaginas and succubus. There's a succubus bottom right corner that's literally throwing her boobs in a guy's face. Yeah. So all and of that's... this is approved on the DMs Guild. And then these are illustrations specifically to a degree drawn to highlight this. Like he did it tongue in cheek, semi knowingly to kind mm -hmm. of showcase the fact that a lot of the artwork on DMs Guild and in general from AD and D, on AD and D, but um, from Dungeons and Dragons fan content is very explicit, including Canon Wizard of the Coast stuff as well. Yeah. So, like, you can see here on the right, on the left hand side, this is one of the illustrations from the book that was flagged. This is sort of like a, a goo monster. Yeah. Um, on the right hand side, these are existing um, bits of artwork from the DMs Guild. Um, okay. This was one of the flagged images. It was too provo provocative. But, like, ultimately, there's a woman with boobs in a guy's face, and the guy's like, I don't know. And there's another woman here, like, grasping her neck suggestively and reaching out, and she's also a monster. Like, it's hypocrisy, basically. Like, absolutely. absolutely. But they approved this, and they said this was okay, but then they pulled this down within hours because it was a dude. Yeah. And um, he, he uh, was, they were like, please censor it or we'll take it down. So he did. So here's an example of the censoring. Uh, this was the Headless Knight, which again, mm -hmm. nothing here is overtly, like there's no sex happening, there's no nudity, everything yeah. is, this is all suggestive. If you were a child walking in, you wouldn't know what this was. Um, but, you know, they didn't like it, so he censored it. And he was, again, as he's admitted himself, he was very tongue in cheek about the way they censored this. Mm -hmm. uh, being like, oh, so the DMs Guild really just can't handle this. So you should go contact the artist and they'll give you the original. Um, and all of this sort of stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, again, it's not breaking the rules, but apparently that was then seen in bad faith, and they completely pulled it down. Um, oh, okay. Again, this is another one. This is an example of a, a male sort of, like, nymph with, like, antlers and, you know, doing the whole thing. This is a whole mood. This is super easy. Yeah, and that. again, there's no nudity. This isn't even su sexual or suggestive. Like, it's not like he's straddling the... The branch, like it's his dick. 
Like, yeah. This is all. This is ex- the same shit. If it had boobs, it would be yeah. one of these images on the right. Exactly. But here we are. It's getting pulled down as as explicit content. That's so dumb. So that's the controversy that I'm yeah. talking about. Oliver Clegg having uh, his and all of the artists he works with art pulled down because essentially straight boys can't handle the idea of guys being sexy. Yeah. So going back to the comments, so um, Jay Lester, how do you feel about the incident? Sometimes it takes more than one night for people to become family, taking a month or more before. Oh, that's for the house thing. Um, yeah. What would you suggest as an alternative? I was thinking of making a supplement about clown culture on the DMs Guild, and I don't know what else I'd be able to host it or get traffic as a small creator. Itch.io. Yeah, that's itch. where um, a lot of content goes. Essentially, the um, if you want to do it for 5th edition, uh, you can use the open gaming license. Uh, the open gaming license is any content that uh, people can use for free so long as they say it's from the open gaming license. How do you know it's from the open gaming license? Everything on Roll20 is the open gaming license. And that's also a top tip if you're making anything. All of the rules there, you can copy as straight text. You can download a PDF of the open gaming license for 5th edition from the Wizards of the Coast website, but because it's a PDF, it's a pain in the ass to copy the text over because it comes over with janky formatting. If you take yep. it from Roll20, all of the text is straight. Like it's it's as if you're copying from a Word document. Um, but yeah, uh, anything on Roll20 you can quote in your supplements and then you just have to include um, the license, the open gaming license at the end of your um, uh, document, your supplement in its entirety uh, for it to be kosher, so to speak. I have seen people just write, like, two sentences. This uses content from the Open Gaming License. Um, and that has seems to do it. I don't really feel that Wizards of the Coast is ever going to chase someone up on licensing. And even if they do, it'll start with a warning of, you need to include the license, and then you can just change it. But with um, if you're doing a 5th edition supplement, use the Open Gaming License, and then just stick the license at the back. If you want an example of how that works, um, all of the original Dungeons on a Dime PDFs uh, have the Open Gaming License at the back. Uh, so all of the physical issues as well. Um, there are videos talking about this more, and um, if you want, I'm happy to explain this further in detail later. But like, uh, using my words, like I would publish it on a website called itch.io, as in the letters I and O, uh, because I think they take maybe, I think it's between like 10 and 30% depending on where you are. It'll be 10% in the UK because you've got good um, laws. I know that in Brazil, for example, it's 50%, but that's just because of uh, officials tax laws in Brazil. Um, but in the UK, they take 10%, you get 90%, and you are hosting it on there like an Etsy rather than giving Wizards of the Coast all of your work. You know, because I didn't know any about that. So, yeah, that's what I would yeah. do. Um, and to be honest, I also just wouldn't publish 5th edition content. I mean, it's part of, in general, I've been feeling more and more off about 5th edition, not as a rule set, but as like a general, like everything behind it. Wizards of the Coast have been really scummy in the past with a lot of different things. They have a sexual abuser as one of their head of staff and people who defend um, abusers as their heads of staff, i.e. Mike Miles. Hmm. Um, and a bunch of other stuff that is just gross. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, no ideal. Far from. And to some degree, they have been good at responding to issues, but they've also, like, it. sometimes it feels a lot like lip service. Right. So yeah, um, I'd say it's better to make a system. Pardon me, I'm getting the burps again. It's better to make system neutral content that's about story and plot, like I do Dungeons on a Dime now, because then anyone can use it, and it can work with any system. True, true, true. Like, that's what people struggle with in the majority. If they're learning a new rule system, they want, if they're entirely new to role playing or they want a story, they don't want the rules necessarily. They want the 
They want the story, they want the drama, they want the conflict, they want the characters. Because that's the most difficult stuff to come up with. The rest of it is ruling in the moment. And there's a bajillion videos and Patreons about making 5th edition content. Now they'll do it way faster than you can ever do if you're including it in an adventure. Like, there's there's a magic... I think there's like at least 5 or 10 magic item Patreons out there that make a new magic item every day. And they've been going for two years. Like, would you want to buy a supplement with 20 magic items or pay a $1 single month subscription to... Uh, Patreon and get 400 magic items that have been balance tested for two years. Like, yeah, that's pretty good actually. If you're thinking about it in terms of like, I'm writing not for joy but to make money. Like, individual fifth edition supplements. They just the market is very saturated. Now, if you want to write for joy, for example, like you're making say queer literature, like uh, Oliver was, and you're writing to share that in a community that plays fifth edition that's cool and i mean that's your goal in mind but like for example with dungeon of dime my point for doing dungeon of dime was to get um uh graduate illustrators that cash dollar dollar bill dollar, dollar. Dollar, dollar, dollar. Mm -hmm. so like that was my motivation and that's why um i do this neutral and i you know approach this in a way that's like what's profitable um because i want to be able to pay people ultimately, because I feel like people do a lot of really great work and it sucks trying to promote yourself and also pay bills. Sylvia Wendy House. What is a Sylvia Wendy House? A what Wendy House? Sylvia. Yeah, it's on the first floor. I'm looking. There's Bunny's room, who's a half elf paladin. Love it. Oh. Sylvia's room, half elf fighter. Rarely sleeps in the cottage. As such, her room is a total piss take. In the center of an otherwise bare room is a Wendy house. The Wendy house is a live, love, love signs on the walls. Oh. Try to make it more appetizing for middle aged women that Sylvia likes to hang out with. <laughs> oh, God. I love it as character motivation. I hate it as an existing thing. Oh, so like the Wendy House is like a kid's play cottage. Yeah. I, but, but. What? I mean, they're paying me, so I'll do it. I don't understand. I don't but understand. I'll do it. <laughs> hmm. Essentially, that was a really long ramble about um, was the coast. My opinion, um, they've handled it really poorly. Um, the most recent update on the whole issue is the was the coast we're going to. They offered to Oliver after like three and not three weeks, maybe like a week and a half of constant outrage that this happened. They have offered to Oliver to reinstate his project, and he's turned it down. Um, on the condition that he won't he won't put the project back on uh, DM's Guild um, until there's uh, like proper rules and you know for everyone in place that says it's okay. That's, like he doesn't want to be a like special case, which is totally fair. I love that this character has a bruised eye, by the way. Oh, thanks. There's just meant to be like one scrunched eye, but I think maybe I will just do that, like mm. and eye a little bit more. Also, arms again, doing that thing that I don't know how to. Mm. Uh, Lister says that they can't see my oh wow you can't see my stream that's very fair um, oh. because I stopped oh. sc screen mirroring and I completely didn't notice I haven't done that much to be honest don't worry um, <laughs> I've just started drawing the pl I was like oh playhouse what do I do hmm. so yeah it's don't worry <laughs> could you imagine oh. I finished it all off stream Sorry, Senpai, it's done now. Ooh, woo. Oh, God. Hey, did I show you the other, the recent character uh, commission? The Bork Norok, the Science Org? You, okay, so I've seen the finished and the work in progress, but just show it off. 
Why not? Why not? Flaunt it, honey. Wait, no, uh, okay. one. Okay, hang on. I have to redo this roof because one side okay. is really slanted. It's like a tiny Norwegian house. Oh, yeah. Um. So, dear stream, this is Bork Nork, the science orc. Uh, D D's answer to Bill Nye, the science guy. It was spawned from a meme. Uh, one of the players in my D D group, which is like, I don't know how to how best to describe the group that I'm in. It's like a D D like. It's essentially like a D D guild. I guess. Mm. Would you not agree? Like, it's like a, a group of loads of people. Oh, because you've described it. Yeah, basically they're sort of like this consistent open world group where they have maybe like five or I will also say, for example, ten GMs running games at the same time. And yeah. all of the gem GMs then work together to weave the consequences of their different parties into the same world. So it's like everyone's playing in Critical Role's Exandria, and because yes. everyone's playing in the same setting, uh, the GMs can then say, oh, well, they just went to Wild Mountain, did this, so everyone else bear that in mind in your games. And they kind of feed into each other, which is totally to cool. Degree. Very, it's very, very cool. It's usually about, like, let's say three or four games at most. Like, usually we're, we work out of a pub, and there's, like, four tables mm -hmm. most but because it's obviously Miss Rona has stepped in, uh, it's like two games a week usually. Mm. Uh, and yeah, there, I don't think there's like that much consciousness in the tracking of things. But it is like it is one world. Like there yeah. are like sure. it's any way that we're doing it. It's still like a consistent yeah, living, cool. breathing world, which is hype. Um, so yeah, so that's Borknark. There's bones. Actually, you know what? I always forget you can do like that gallery thing. There we go. Bones, the big strong lady. Neat. Uh, a wee shadow monk for y'all. I like the painty texture for the shadow. Thank you. Yeah, that was nice. I just added a bit of like half tone and then some more shadows underneath it. Mm. It's quite good. Uh, I love the science orc. I'm glad you do. He was very mm. fun to do. He the science the orc is is that meme of oh no, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. Okay, no, I didn't. But I will insert the pose. Get this energy, and also, oh, yeah, this energy. Oh no! Oh, uh, it. There we go. Good enough. <laughs> the combination of these two of Ang doing the, like the spinning thing, mm -hmm. and uh, Goblin and Cats vs Dogs. It's just iconic, really. Oh dear me, where are we at? That is a, a good question. And the answer is, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I keep meaning to finish the... I've been doing, like, a game design course. Well, it's a game design course. Uh, through his website thing. Where I'm on, like, the character design bit now. Mm. It's, like, doing these three characters, changing, like, mood density proportion of the character. It's quite fun. Mm. Mood so, density. Well, mood mm. proportion and density, yeah. So, like... Oh... As in the different levels of detail. Not like, as their mood changes, they get smaller and angrier. Imagine. Just like like designing the same character, but like for a different mood of game. So like a, a more like like Mario versus Borderlands kind of thing. Oh, neat, neat, neat. Okay. Like Mario versus Bloodborne. Like, what's the different mood there? Oh, God. I just saw something that was really awful about Mario. Um, it will ruin it for you. God, what? Guess how old Mario is. Is he like... 80 something. No. He's 30. Guess how old Peach is. Oh no. 16, 12, I don't know. 15. Oh no. It's it's big. Oh no. Vibes. That's bad. That's really bad. Also, moving swiftly away from that because I don't want to sit on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, very much like Bones. Bones is a badass. She's very cool. Um, I've also been trying to design how I want to paint or decorate my skates and helmet that I got recently for my birthday. I think I'm going to do some kind of like tarot-esque moon and sun on the boots. Mm. Is that like the smiling sun? Uh, Where she's like... Yes, mm. that, like sun and a moon. And then we like, just... Oh, I see. You're trying designs. Cool, 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 cool. I have that helmet. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, because yeah, I am really, really paranoid about, like, um, 
cycling and then coming off her bike and then just having her nail go through like the gap in a cycling helmet. Oh god. Imagine. Yeah, that's why I'm like full yeah. coverage. Like it's all or nothing, baby. That would be like a final destination death right there. Like, yes. That's... Be like, oh yeah. he was fine. Didn't break any bones. Nail to the brain. Nail to the brain. Okay, we've got a baby toy house. Got storage, there's items listed. Oh, it is now 8 o'clock, or oh almost 8.30. Um, I haven't eaten dinner. No, neither. I had a, a pesto pasta at like 5 or like 4.30 because I hadn't had lunch. So I think this is a, a good time to start wrapping up. Yeah, I would say so. Before we go, are there any questions from anyone? Yeah. Big stretch while we wait. Oh, sorry. Big stretch while we wait. Do the stretches. Mm -hmm. stretch your Drink your water. Take your drugs. Take your wrists. The Practice some mindfulness. Oh, that little crack there. That was a nice little crunch of the rest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get that good burn up the arm. <laughs> it shouldn't burn. Well, you know, you know when you get that like, that, like really tense, like not burn. You know what I mean? Like when the muscles are, like very tense when you're like doing breast stretches. Maybe I push it too much. Oh yeah. Just like it, just like the pull it on the muscle. Well, that's just, the like, thing. Like that, that's, that's what I call like the stretch feeling. If it's burning, that's like if it's painful, you just yeah, no, no, just like the good, the the deep stretch, mm. I guess. Like oh god um i both love and can't do yoga uh because when i start doing stretches especially any like back and floor i just get immediately really sleepy my whole body's just like oh okay night now <laughs> collapse yeah when is the next stream you'll be working on this so um I, well, I don't know about Fraser. Do you want to come back next Saturday? Yeah, sure. This has been fun. Yeah, I don't, well, fucking ignoring, like, Foot Britney and, like, the... Foot Britney. Like, that I'll sounds like a command. I'll destroy our horse, but apparently. Oh my god, no. You started it. Hmm. I love all the characters, Fraser, they're great. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm... I will be like I will probably be working on this next Saturday, but I will have done more work before then. Off cam. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. If I feel like I'm going to finish it, then I will save it for the Saturday to like be like, oh, look at me, I'm so perfect, I'm going to finish this, and then of course on the Saturday be like, I hate everything, and I'll just rub it all out. <laughs> Show off all the all the. Yeah. Be like, it's so great, and I'm like when you like look at something for like, the first time again, you you come back a day later, and you're like, ew. I have disgraced myself. I've just realised I haven't drawn any elves. How dare I? <gasps> Scottish elves. Just entirely blue. I mean, they kind of have to be. Mm. Well, I'm saying that, like, this little guy was going to be blue. He's definitely going for, like, a wee free men kind of mm. vibe. Oh, I would love it if they just had blue hair. Oh. Like, they had big fuzzy body hair, which they dyed blue. So the skin is, like, you know, pasty white because no one ever sees the sun in Scotland, but they just dyed all their hair blue. That is fact. That is fact. Yeah. I, yeah, I'll work on that. I've got colouring still to do, so we'll see where we get to. Mm -hmm. Stop working with stopping the stream. <laughs> I just got, like, a good idea for... Okay. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but yeah. Um, so, thank you everyone for joining us on this long, rambling journey through uh, Streamtopia. Streamtopia. This has been working on a dime. Ooh, we can shout stuff out. Um, Fraser, have you got any cool projects coming up soon? Oh, lordy. Uh, that's a good old question, Brian. Do I have any good Or projects? do you have commissions open? Or... Uh, yeah, commissions are always open. Uh, always looking to try and earn a living. That's mm -hmm. always fun. Uh, I do character commissions. Uh, I've done a few of them recently. You saw some of them just before for mostly D&D characters, but for anything really, I'd be down to do. Um, I'm not working on anything else. I think I finished most of my like 
odds and ends that I have been slowly working through. How dare you? I know. Achieving projects and things? Yeah, finishing things? Yeah. In this economy? <laughs> yeah, oh. I yeah, I think I, I don't have anything, really. My uh, project I was working on, the t-shirt thing is finished. The, the should be going live. It's for, like, merch for a local drag queen, which is very cool. But I will... You know, I'm just going to bring it up. Yeah. Because why not? Uh, oh, God, if I can even remember the... Right. Well, hmm. yeah. well, you find it. In the meantime, um, I love that this, the most recent search is Highland Oats. Um, I have uh, badges somewhere. Do I have the badges on the thing? Do I have badges on the thing? I'm pretty sure I have a screenshot of them but I also have no idea what's on my camera roll right now, so just pausing the streaming for a second. Hold up. Oh, wait, no, they're on the Patreon. I can just go to the Patreon page and show them off there. But I have um, a deal going with my Patreon, so anyone that signs up uh gets a pin badge uh this month if you sign up for five dollars or more you get a pin badge sent straight to you first class in zipost um and they are kind of riffs on the dungeons and a dime logo so they are um like it's the hands from the logo holding different uh sizes of die yeah they're gorgeous so um yeah these are the designs zoom um so there's like a d4 d6 d8 d10 d12 d20 then there's also just like a flat coin and then the gm version has got a little dragon on it who's like ah. which also reminds me of the is he you know meme <laughs> is he um, you know streaming, by the way is oh, i am streaming no i'm on the wrong thing that's why oh. aha got it I was on YouTube and not on the thing. <gasps> How dare. Um, yeah. So um, I have these badges. Uh, so if you sign up for $5, then you get, or $7, you get one of these at random. Um, and if you sign up for $10, then you get to choose one. Stunning. I also have some cute patches um, on the way, but they're going to take a lot longer to arrive. Um, this is the design for them. It's hella gay. Beautiful. 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 But yes, they'll, they'll arrive in like two months because COVID. Uh, <laughs> We're locked this year. Yeah. Uh, Tell us about your drag. Well, it ain't mine. I wish it was. I wish I could look at this But uh, my friend, uh, who is a local drag queen in Dundee, Scotland, um, approached me to do some merchandise. And we've just finished it off and it's just launched on the website. Mm. So, like satanic tarot card design it's gorgeous it's beautiful a bunch of different sizes and t-shirts and you are also supporting a local drag queen a starving artist which we all are uh we love to see it it's also fun and spooky and just mm. weird as hell so it's always good cool yeah i love you just get that face on the fan oh it would be so good yeah i just like saw all that stuff there i was like oh my god there's so much for these other people there's like like water bottles and everything is wild. Okay, well, um, I think I'm gonna go and have a microwave meal. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm gonna go and heat up my risotto. Treat yo risotto. Thank you, everyone, for coming along. It's been really fun. Thanks for hearing us ramble about all sorts of horrible, disgusting, t awful memes. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible memes. And. Right to blame i am like 20 percent at blame I, mm, okay sure like i mentioned one thing and it it's like i might have started the avalanche but i was not all the snow okay that's fair moving on uh <laughs> moving on i'm having a microwave meal um you enjoy yourself everyone have fun have a lovely lovely night bye bye we done. We out. <laughs>